candies can kill. In today's video, we look at the scariest things found in Valentine's candy. Toxic candies you definitely should not be eating. And even disgusting candies that will make you sick. These are the craziest and most dangerous candies you've ever seen. And you might even be eating them right now. Watch this video or you might lose all of your teeth forever. If you want to impress your crush on Valentine's Day, you can't go wrong with getting them chocolate. Specifically, a cute cuddly one that's shaped like a bear. Bear hugs? Yes, please. So lover boy gives chocolate bear to lover girl. Everything goes well. That is until she realized that not only are bears furry on the outside, but apparently this bear is furry on the inside too. Cause what the heck is this? Buddy's head is completely snapped off. Kind of rude lover girl, but okay. And he also has a chunk of hair coming out of his neck. Like bro, you ever hear of a razor? It's Valentine's day. You gotta clean up and look nice to impress the ladies, you know? Or other men. But I think the only people you're gonna be attracting with that amount of hair is uh, Chewbacca. And who even needs diamond rings when you can get your girlfriend an edible candy that will probably give her a cavity after. And you don't even have to buy her any more gifts after because you'll be at the dentist. Life hack. So this girl thought she was getting the gift of a lifetime until she reached her hand inside of the bag and allegedly found something that wasn't really ring pops. More like a slime pop. Or a juice pop? No, that is not liquid sugar, family. I mean, I kind of wish it was. Because it'd be a lot tastier than what we're about to see. Apparently someone was trying to tell this girl that she was a little stinky because after she took her hand outside of that bag, her hand was allegedly soaked with Purell. Flipping hand sanitizer. Like what? I mean, yeah, candy doesn't have the best reputation of being healthy food, but I can assure you that this is not the way to do clean eating. Y'all took it too far. At least the ring pops were okay, though. Mmm. Ooh, I love candy necklaces. I like to wear them. I like to eat them. I like that they have little cute messages on them that make me feel loved. Because y'all know my family hates me. Hmm. I guess this person got a giant pack of them to pass them out to all their friends at school. But then when she opened the package to decide who's going to get what necklace, she realized that every single one of them are the same. Bleh. That is except one particular one. It's the cursed one. Do y'all see that packet in the middle? What might look like just broken up candies. Those are not broken up candies. Oh, no, no, no. Those are broken up medicine. If you know what I mean. Allegedly. Well, actually, one of those looks like a half a piece of Tums. You know, the thing that you eat if your tummy hurts. But don't eat anything, family, without your parents knowing. Ask them first before you have anything, even candy. Especially if you see super sketchy candies like this. That necklace does not just want to be around your neck. It wants to choke your neck. Ugh. Ah, kisses. The thing we all want for Valentine's Day and... <laughs> Wait a sec. I meant that's gross. Obviously. Boys have cooties, I think. Or maybe it's girls. Or maybe it's both and you just gotta stick to yourself. You know, like social distancing? -y? But anyways, chocolate. Can't go wrong with chocolate. Or so we thought. Allegedly, somebody opened up that beautiful silver piece of love and uh, instead of getting a smoochy smooch, they got a pokey poke. Because allegedly they found a whole flip of needles in there. I can't tell if that's a chocolate kiss or a really odd shaped pear. Or better yet, a prickly pear. Uh, uh. The good thing is the person saw the needle before they took a bite. Or else that would have been one bloody valentine. Is that a movie? This is a cute dog. And then this is somebody shaking a cute dog because they feel something inside of it. What could it be? Is it a Valentine's Day surprise? Is there bonus candy in there that we didn't know about? Let's find out. Let's see. What is it? It's a... Uh... Oh, it's pink. Just like Valentine's Day. Okay. And it's a... Uh... Stick? Oh. <gasps> No! A whole flipping, you know, like, razor out of a puppy? Why? Mr. Puppy Star, did you know about this? Were you trying to hurt us? Or are you just trying to send us a message? I mean, yes, I know I grow a super long beard on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But I always try and shave on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Sometimes I just can't keep up. But way to be rude about it. Jeez. 
And if you're too shy to tell your crush you like them, just hand them this pink soda. Because it says crush on it. But uh, I think this dude might have done a terrible mistake giving it to somebody else because... Look what's floating in the top of it! Is that a worm? A snake. A really long piece of rice noodle. Because if so, I kind of want it. But anyway, spoiler alert, family, it was none of the above. Because after this person was so sketched out by this disgusting drink, they decided to pour it all out into the sink and do their own kind of investigating. What is in the bottom of the bottle, you ask? Oh, you know, nothing important. Just floss that somebody used to clean their teeth. Oh, yeah, and by the way, it's used. Allegedly. So on top of getting the super disgusting, gross, and probably smelly string that they didn't ask for, they also got to get chunks of that dude's roast beef sandwich. But y'all know that stuff sticks to your teeth like glue. Ugh. This is a chocolate flower bouquet. Yes, sir. No. Oh, y'all are gonna say yes? Uh, you wrong! Look a little closer, family. No, closer. No, even closer! I see one, two, three chocolates and... Oh! What is that? A red syringe. You know, like the thing that they use to give people medicine when they don't want it? Oh, the cough syrup I didn't want to take as a kid. Ugh, I'm traumatized. What is the red liquid, you might ask? Well, family, I don't know. And I don't think we'll ever know, but to make ourselves feel better between you and me, let's just say it was Kool-Aid. Uh, Kool-Aid, okay? Kool-Aid. Fruity hearts. I think this is a Valentine's version of Joob Joobs. This person just wanted to have a regular Valentine's Day movie night. So they opened the bag. They got a cute M&M's cup to put it in. And then as they were filling up the cup, they noticed that uh, there's not only Joob Joobs in there. Heart Joob Joobs. Apparently. Allegedly. There's uh, something else that you probably shouldn't eat. Something else that uh can also become red if uh, it's... How do I say this? Used? You know, like girls use them in the bathroom once a month. I don't even want to talk about it. This one is the most cursed we've seen by far. And we're done with this one and moving on to the next. Okay, bye. Okay, this one is just straight up weird. These are those candy cinnamon hearts that make your mouth burn a little when you eat them. Well, apparently now your mouth's not just gonna burn from sucking on the candy. It's also gonna burn if you suck on this rusty door stopper thing that allegedly was found in this candy. Cinnamon heart door. Cinnamon heart stopper. Cinnamon heart door stopper? I'm confused. I love these chocolate hearts with marshmallows or caramel on the inside. Or sometimes strawberry cream. Yeah, that's my favorite. If y'all want to give me anything for Valentine's Day, um... I didn't say anything. After they broke open the heart, like they literally snapped the heart in two. Like a broken heart. Kind of ironic on Valentine's Day, but okay. They found this. Allegedly. A dirty, rotten band-aid. Because apparently they heard about the broken heart part and they wanted to fix it. I mean, at least they tried, though. It was more than my mom ever did for me when I'm sad. And now we have an eight-pack of heart-shaped lollipops. Because sometimes instead of telling your crush that she smells like a rotten chicken nugget, probably just keep your mouth shut and start looking on the lolly. A lot safer that way. So nothing wrong with these lollipops, right, family? Oh, you're wrong. All of the lollipop sticks look pretty normal, except if you look at the one in the middle. That one looks a little thicker than the rest of them, doesn't it? And you want to know why that one's thicker than the rest of them? Because flip it over and you have a tooth flosser? Bro, you really trying to camouflage the tooth flosser stick with the lollipop stick? Just because they're both white doesn't mean no one's going to notice. Oh, yeah. And by the way, your teeth must have been very dirty, sir. Because the floss is a highlighter yellow. Like, dude, what are you eating? You drinking Gatorade or toxic sludge? Because that thing is too bright to be normal. Well, the good news is, is whoever's eating this lollipop, if they get any of it stuck in their teeth, they can always use the floss. But then at that point, you might as well just go to the dentist and ask for a whole new set of teeth because, yeah, I think your mouth's gonna be broken. Or filled with radioactive toxic superworms. One or the two. Ugh. Number 10, space dust. Space dust! If there's one thing that's better than candy, what? then it's popping candy. <gasps> but not every new innovation has worked out so I well. love popping! Pop Rocks were first released by General Foods in 1976. Wait, is Pop Rocks and they've been back? so popular and that they're Pop still sold the around the world and enjoyed by millions every year. Uh huh. After realizing their success, the company released a follow up product the following year called Space Dust. Oh, it was essentially okay. the same candy, but instead of being rock shaped, it was a powder. And this so then caused what's the problem? some problems. It sold extremely well, 
but parents soon became <gasps> concerned about its name. Whoa, whoa, and its whoa, what are they doing there? Some illegal whoa, 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 whoa. From fear of leading children into a different type of powder. A different type of powder? What are you trying to say? The only kind of powder that I need in my life is icing sugar to make the frosting on my favorite cupcakes. The name was changed to Cosmic Candy, Ooh. but still the association <gasps> of drugs remained. This, along with a rumor that a child Based had died after eating the powder and drinking <gasps> soda pop, led to the- <gasps> Guys, I was just kidding at the beginning of the video. I didn't know kids actually died from these candies. Oh. Ending of space dust in some states mm. and eventually the company ceased production. Yeah, good idea, bro. Number nine. Toxic waste <gasps> nuclear. Toxic waste? I eat those too! Guys, I eat a lot of toxic waste on my other YouTube channel called Alexia Morano. Go subscribe to that channel right now. I eat a lot of candy and fun food and a, a lot of cool stuff, okay? Go subscribe. Sludge chew bars. Ooh, sludge chew Some bar. Flavor candy is very popular. Doesn't sound and good. there's a wide range of versions available. Those One lips of the most are juicy. Is toxic waste, which promises a super sour experience. Okay, but one I like that. that. was released under the label left people feeling sour for all the wrong reasons. Imported from Pakistan, FDA officials found that the toxic waste nuclear sludge chew bars contained elevated levels of lead in them. <gasps> more than three. Guys, I don't know about you, but lead is the type of thing that you find in your pencils at school. That is definitely not be in your freaking candy bar? That's illegal! The toxic waste nuclear sludge chew bars contained elevated levels of lead in them, more than three times the safe amount. Oh! With fears they could lead to developmental issues in children. No, you think a toxic chemical found in candy bars that kids eat could lead to developmental issues? No, I for you. Learning difficulties and behavioral problems, authorities yeah. had to act. The findings led to them being banned, mm. and because they weren't Good. selling very well in the first place, the company never re-released them with a different recipe. Seems like the name was a dead giveaway. Wait guys, if Toxic Waste Chewy Bars has that kind of stuff, does that mean the Toxic Waste Hard Candies have that too? Oh my god guys, comment down below if you think the Hard Candy Toxic Waste is dangerous too! Number 8. Energy candy. Ooh, energy like drinks energy have exploded drink? in popularity in the past few decades after offering people an alternative way to feel awake and alert without okay. needing to rely on coffee. Sure. It seemed only a matter of time then before someone released a candy that was intended to achieve the same effect. Mm, but that's and not a good for you. was released in Malaysia called Extra Lee. They were available in a variety Extra of flavors, Lee. but authorities soon realized these candies contained a scheduled poison called Tadalafil in the I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Did they just Get your world poison? Bro, what the heck do they put in these candies? Y'all are making me never want to eat candy again. It's a chemical that's sold in pharmacies to help with male a performance. A chemical! But being available so openly in a product like this yeah. posed serious risks. That you sell to consumption can people? lead to loss of vision and hearing. A drop loss of vision and hearing? And a stroke or heart attack. <gasps> so the products were immediately banned. Okay, guys, I swear I was joking at the beginning of this video. I really didn't know that these candies were that serious. Instead of having nightmares about ghosts and demons at night, I'm going to have nightmares about this candy. Anyone now found selling them in the country is liable to a fine of up to $25,000 <gasps> and up to 10 years in prison. Pay up, pay up. Number seven. Kinder Surprise Eggs. I love Kinder Surprise! Years, people around the world have experienced the fun of opening up a Kinder yeah, Surprise that's me, chocolate that's me, that's egg me. to find a plastic capsule inside mm, the container. They're so toy. good. Those in America, however, have missed out thanks to a law that was passed in the 1930s that banned the sale of any food product that contained a non nutritive object. Whoa! So you guys are telling me that y'all don't have Kinder Surprise in America? I feel bad for you because in Canada, we definitely have it. People love it. Over the years, this has led to tens of thousands of the treats being confiscated from people trying to cross into America from Canada <laughs> for fear that children may not realize what's inside. <gasps> okay. Did they just say thousands of confiscations of people trying to smuggle chocolate across the border? Okay. I've heard of people smuggling money. I've heard of people smuggling illegal substances. But chocolate? You're telling me people are willing to risk their life Go to jail for candy? Uh, well, maybe I would too. And that they would choke on the toy. 
Things have oh, changed recently. Oh, because there's a After token Ferrero, hazard. Who make the candy have found a way around the law. Ooh, what is it? While the traditional Kinder Surprise eggs remain banned, Americans can now buy Kinder Joys. <gasps> Thank These God. These eggs split in two, with one side being made of delicious chocolate and the other half containing a toy. Oh it's no! You guys only get half an egg. Guys, you ever hear the saying that you need two halves of a heart to make a whole? Well, chocolate is the key to someone's heart. So if you only have one half of the chocolate, then how are you gonna get to the heart? You ever hear of a romantic love equation? Didn't think so. Good compromise, but still isn't as great as the real thing. Yeah, it's not that cool. Number six. What am I Malum looking at? Candy. Haribo is one of the world's leading candy manufacturers okay. and sells a wide range of different products. <gasps> I've had those gummy bears before. One of the before. most popular is called Malum. Okay. When these candies were released in Britain, they soon came under intense scrutiny. Why? They look pretty the danger, normal. according to parents, wasn't in the ingredients, but on the packaging. The flavor of the candy was a mixture of at least two fruits, okay. and it seems as if the graphics department decided to show the moment the combination was conceived. Images show the fruit joyously oh. embracing each other, and this apparently joyously caused embarrassment embracing, the country, huh? parents tried to explain it to their children. Oh. Despite having been around for years in Germany, UK that. stores began to ban the products from their shelves, and Haribo was forced to make alterations for the market's sensibility. So who is the sick-minded individual who works at Haribo who decided that it'd be a good idea to put these pictures of the candies joyously embracing for kids. Y'all are sick and twisted. And I'm not talking about that candy. Number five, jelly mini cups. <gasps> oh, I like those, I jelly eat those. Jelly mini cups are popular all over the world, but some versions of the sweet you treats just have pop been them in your mouth in the UK like... and Europe because of the ingredients that they contain. Designed to be eaten in one go, yeah, I the do jelly that is one contained go. within a plastic cup that can be squeezed to make it fall out into the mouth. But there were serious concerns that the product was a choking hazard. <gasps> uh -oh. One of the ingredients used to allow it to keep its shape was konjac. But yeah. the problem is that it doesn't dissolve very easily. <gasps> the jelly, therefore, oh. runs the risk of becoming stuck in a person's throat. Oh, and no. has been blamed for a number of deaths of children <gasps> and elderly people around oh, the world. Oh, no, not more freaking. Manufacturers <laughs> attempted to circumvent the problem by oh, using man. a different binding agent, such as a seaweed. Balls out. Seaweed in a jello cup? I mean, okay, a choking hazard is terrible. But you're telling me you didn't have any better ideas than super salty seaweed? Blech. Number four. Hippie sippy. Hippie sippy. If someone Is suggested weird? selling candy in a syringe like packaging today, they'd probably be laughed out of the meeting. Why? But in 1968, things were very different. Hippie oh, so were chocolate balls in a plastic tube that could be sucked out through a needle like straw <gasps> and became an instant success. Huh? Parents, however, weren't as keen on the design, yeah. fearing that it could normalize the act of deriving pleasure from a syringe and therefore leading their kids onto drugs. Oh my god! To make matters worse, Hippie Sippies came with buttons with phrases such as, we sell happiness, and I'll try anything. I'll try anything? Now those are some dark words that you never want to hear come out of someone's mouth. Someone who is down to try anything will probably be down to punch you in the face too, as long as the time is right. Number three, Lifesaver Holes. Okay, this seems fine right now. Lifesavers are a candy that were first released in the U.S. I in like 1912 life and have been popular ever since. They're fruity, they're Available tasty. Available in a range of flavors, their name comes from the fact that they look like lifesavers. But yeah. you may also have heard the false rumor that the holes were put in them to prevent people from choking if they got stuck in their throats. I mean, that makes to sense. To capitalize on people's fondness for the candies, a new range was brought out, the holes that were supposedly cut from the original lifesavers. These small chunks of sweet goodness were sold in plastic tubes with a flip lid. Oh, but were so I get it. It's the holes that come from the cutout of the donut. You know, lifesavers like a donut, but every donut has a hole in it. So that's the holes cut out of the donuts. The lifesaver donuts. The lifesaver donut holes holes? Uh, I don't know. Recalled, ironically, because Why? of the risk of choking. Ah! Children struggled if they accidentally swallowed the candies, and there were also reports of people who had managed to chew the lid of the container and choked on that, too. After a complete redesign, they were brought back to the market, but were never as popular as the original design, so they slowly faded away. I don't know, but I feel like Lifesaver kind of got the short end of the stick there. Like, I've definitely seen other candy companies that just have, like, small little balls. I mean, if they're that small, how do you even choke on them? I don't know, but Lifesavers are still Lifesavers, so I think they're doing okay. Little extra pocket money would have been nice, but I don't think they're going broke anytime soon. Number two. Chronic Candy. 
chronic. Before edibles became allowed in some states across America, Woo! there have been a number of times when companies have tried to release a product that simulates the flavor of cannabis. I don't One of the know. most well-known attempts was called chronic candy, and while it contained no psychoactive ingredients, the green and purple <gasps> lollies and gummy worms had the unmistakable taste of the green herb. Oh my god! They were released in 2006. I don't want to eat candy that tastes like a plant! Guys, if you didn't know, I'm from Canada, and this kind of stuff is actually legal here now. Kind of weird. I definitely do not like anything like that. But it's just interesting to see how times have changed. With a publicity blitz, and celebrities like oh, Snoop, Snoop Dogg, Dogg and Paris Hilton my boy. were involved in the promotional campaigns. They were extremely popular, but equally as controversial. Uh -huh. There was a concern that they normalized cannabis culture and could lead to children using the actual drug. So protest groups, such as the Coalition Against Chronic Candy, were set up to picket uh. and boycott stores that sold them. Coalition Against Chronic Candy? You're telling me that they made a specific fan account to get this candy banned? Dang, bro, why do you gotta be such a hater? <gasps> Number one. I've never had these, Chinese but I've always wanted candies. to try them. Candies are meant to be fun oh. and a treat, but what if you can improve your Happy health by pills? eating them? Happy pills seem suspicious. In 2014, I don't think that's what candy does. I think it does the opposite. Taobao became flooded with different candies that promised certain medicinal benefits, such as cures for unhappiness, a longer life, huh? reversing the signs of aging, and even improving chances to attract a partner. What? Of course, Sign all these up. claims are false. Do you hear that, guys? They said all the claims were false. It's against the law to advertise something that's not true. These people are sneaky. Of course, all these claims are false. Mm. And the products were nothing more than sugar-coated candies in white bottles that looked like they belong on a shelf in a pharmacy. Wow! When challenged Sneaky. about this, the companies behind the claims said they were clearly a joke and intended to be funny gifts for occasions like April Fool's Day. But the authorities didn't agree. Mm -mm. Not only did the candies make false claims about what they could do, mm -hmm. but there were concerns about the ingredients made to use the $1 bottles. <gasps> The government warned people not to buy them and ran adverts Good. telling them to avoid regret medicine, breakup medicine, and forget past romance potion. Oh, oh. Companies were banned from offering them online too, which led to some independent sellers being stuck with thousands of dollars worth of product they couldn't sell. Ah! Uh, well, I guess that's kind of what you get when you invest money in a sketchy product. That's like me investing money in a cheese grater that I know will sometimes chop off someone's finger if they grate the cheese not properly. It's just not a very moral decision. So lesson of today, guys, be honest, don't be sketchy, and maybe eat a couple more vegetables. But then sneak some candy. But then veggie. But then maybe more candy. But then veggie. Or candy. Or veggies. Or candy. Or veggies. Or candy. Candy. Exploding gum. Ooh, the Candy name already sounds are desperately sketchy. trying to come up with something new every season, and with a new ray of hope for their sales to skyrocket. One such incident was when a Ukrainian chemistry student in year 2009, after he supercharged his bubble gum that had devastating results, uh -oh. he liked to increase the sour taste of his favorite brand, so he would often dip it into citric <gasps> acid before chewing. But soon one day, he used the wrong powder and instead dipped it into explosives. <gasps> Wait a second, hold up, hold up, hold up. How did this guy have explosive powder in the first place? Like, okay, I get it. If he mixes up the salt with the sugar, or flour with icing sugar, but citric acid and exploding powder? Bro, what you got cooking in your basement, huh? But soon one day, he used the wrong powder and instead dipped it into explosives. Oh my gosh. All it took was one chew and his gum exploded <gasps> in his mouth. Most of the lower part of his face was blown to pieces and he died oh. soon after. <gasps> this insane recipe is off the hook and won't be reaching any of the candy uh, shops. I uh, wouldn't think soon. so. Roadkill gummy candy. Huh? There are different kinds of gummy candy available in the stores. In the year 2004, Kraft thought that they had come up with the idea which would stand out among all the gummy candy. Each one of them was made in the shape of chickens, <laughs> squirrels, and snakes with the marks of tire tracks on them. Yeah, because when I'm thinking about choosing my favorite candy, the most appealing option to me is, I don't know, maybe a run over rat, a squirrel that's been completely smushed, but I guess to each their own. So you do you, trolley. They ended production of the treats by the following hmm. year due to a series of campaigns by animal activists oh. 
who claimed that they were promoting the idea of injuring animals. They further added that the product sent a message to children that it was okay to harm animals. Cra oh my gosh, can we look at this kid's face right now? <sighs> look at the way he's looking at those ducks. I don't like it. He's just looking at them like, hi, little ducky. Come here, little ducky. He starts frothing at the mouth. I won't do anything to hurt you, little ducky. I promise. I'm not buying it, bro. That it was okay to harm animals. Kraft was forced to rethink and relent their strategy. Oh. I mean, I'm all about protecting the animals, but I think that people getting upset over this was a little bit excessive. I mean, they also make candy in the shape of unicorns, but does that mean I'm gonna go out unicorn hunting and try and eat one? I didn't think so. Ooh, I like free things. Who doesn't like things that are free of cost? I like it. We all run to the shops when we hear about big sales mm -hmm. or discounts in the markets. Uh -huh. Who are we kidding? Free candy is one of those candies which are free, duh. But in Madrid, Spain, the tradition of giving sweet treats for free has been banned. <gasps> Madrid, what are you going to do that for? I don't think there's any two words that go better together than free and candy. And you all just going to take it away from us like that? Dang, you cold. But guys, before we get too upset, let's see the reasoning why. Let's give them a chance. On the 5th of January every year, Towns across the country hold a Christmas parade Ooh, called Caligat de Deus, I love Christmas. which sees three wise men greeting children before handing out gifts. These men are taken through the streets to a church in a carriage, and part of the tradition involves throwing candy from the carriage into the crowds. Ooh, like a pinata candy coming at you from everywhere, just hitting you, and, oh, oh, oh. and then finally you catch one, you open your hand to see what candy you got, and it's a disgusting Tootsie Roll. Like, what the heck? I'm gonna throw that right back. You know that nobody likes Tootsie Rolls? Part of the tradition involves throwing candy from the carriage into the crowds. Okay. However, it has led to several injuries uh -oh. as children scramble to collect what they can, and something unfortunate happened in the year 2013. A six-year-old boy, Malego, was killed when he went into the street to collect some candy and was hit by the carriage. Oh. Rules are now in place to prevent such tragedies from ever happening again, and children in the region will have to resort to getting their candy the same way as the rest of us, by annoying their parents until they come around. Oh my god! I Maybe the kids were doing a little one, two, little three, four, you know what I'm saying? Little five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to try and get their favorite candy from the other kids. But no, this kid literally ran into oncoming traffic and got by a car. Oh, poor baby. All for a little Snickers bar. Lucas. Oh, Mexican I've seen this before. It was one of the most in-demand products around the world from South yeah. America. Yeah. Lucas Mexican candy was controversial from the very beginning. Why? The candy was sold in a shaker container that children could use to shake it into their mouths. Okay. Some were seen shaking the powder onto the table, arranging it into a line, and then sniffing it, ah. which immediately worried people about the similarity to drug use. Okay. Lucas claimed that this resulted from using the product wrong. And then it was designed to be lightly sprinkled on fruit to make it. Yes, guys, I've actually had this candy before. No joke. I have a bunch of friends from Mexico. And when they came to Canada, they literally sat me down and were like, Alexia, you need to try this. I was like, what? Like, what? I've tried everything. Like, what? And they're like, no, you've never tried this before. Just have a taste. They sprinkled that whatever magic dust they got on top of an apple. I took one juicy bite. And it was literally the best thing that I have ever had on fruit in my life. It was kind of sweet, kind of salty, but a lot of yummy. But later, when their test showed in, they found that they had twice the amount of lead that is to be allowed. <gasps> Hence, they were immediately Wait. banned by the regulators. Are y'all trying to say that I ate lead? And hold up, hold up. Did they just say it had twice the amount of lead than what's allowed? Um, excuse me, why is lead allowed in candy at all? Are they trying to say that there's other candies on the shelf right now that also have lead in them? Oh, man. Looks like I might have to switch to chocolate. High protein bars. Recently, Mars Bounty Snickers and Milky Way bars said to contain high amounts of protein were banned in Qatar. The reason for this ban was reported as being due to one of its main ingredients not conforming to the requirements of Muslims. 
These protein-rich bars differed from the regular chocolate bar products available under the same brand names, with the original bars still available to purchase. All right, guys, so at least this one didn't have any harmful chemicals or crazy stuff that's really freaking bad for you. It was just that they were saying that it was halal when it actually wasn't, which is super bad. Don't get me wrong. They can't be out here lying to people. That's not cool. I don't know how they found out that they were lying, but whoever snitched on them, I guess good job. Usually they say don't trust a snitch, but I guess in this case, they did the right thing. Nestle Magic Ooh, Ball. this sounds cool. A chocolate ball with a special surprise plastic toy embedded in the middle. Oh, kind of like a Kinder wrong? Surprise. Popular throughout the early 1990s, the Nestle Magic Magic Ball was linked to Disney Ooh, or Pokemon. Oh, Pokemon! I love Pokemon. Located inside, similar to the Kinder Surprise. Yeah, see, guys, I told you. Unfortunately, these treats were found to be illegal, <gasps> with a little-known 1938 law deeming them unsuitable for children. The law, signed off by President Franklin Roosevelt, formed part of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The act states that a confectionery that has a non-nutritive object partially or completely embedded in it is considered illegal. Okay, so they're saying that since that toy inside isn't edible that's a no-no plastic toy located inside the magic ball is a non-nutritive mm. object in that it provided no nutritional value the nestle candy had therefore been labeled as illegal for some five decades that's before illegal. it even existed the product was withdrawn in 1997 after consumer groups said to be largely subsidized by nestle's competitor mars went after the chocolate company labeling the plastic toys found inside the ball as choking Ooh. hazards the u.s Food and Drug Administration upheld the complaint, confirming the candy was in violation of the 1938 Act, and Nestle withdrew the candy from shelves. Uh, Just three years later, the Magic Ball was re-released oh, as the Wonder Ball. Okay. In place of the toys, the Wonder Ball had candy inside and was released in a variety of themes, including Disney, Pokemon, that Cartoon looks so Network, good. Care Bears, and Winnie the Pooh. Man, I want me some Magic Ball! I've never seen that candy in my life, but damn! Did it ever look delicious? Like a chocolate ball with some M&Ms or candy nerds inside? Uh, yes, please. Haw Flakes. Haw Flakes. Described as a sweet and tangy snack. Never heard of this. served with tea. Oh. Haw Flakes, or fruit candy, are also popular as a treat for children. Okay. The Chinese sweets are a mix of oh, pale and Chinese. dark pink and usually form discs. Approximately mm. 2 millimeters thick and between 35 and 40 millimeters in diameter. Specialty Chinese markets. Markets located in the West sell both gourmet and regular Shandong Hawflakes. Gourmet? I mean, guys, I'm not hating on the candy, but judging by the look of that thing, I don't think there's a way you can make it gourmet, okay? <laughs> That's a plain cracker. I don't care how you say it. It's a cracker, period. Unless you're putting $500 caviar on that cracker, I don't think gourmet variations between the two from a pale beige to a reddish brown some Ooh, people are known like to the take pink the flakes one. to help disguise the bitter taste of chinese herbal medicine however okay. their ingredients list could be cause for alarm marketed toward the health conscious the haw flakes are low in sugar and additive free however they could contain harmful substances known to cause cancer <gasps> in fact some have been seized by the united states food and drug administration on several occasions oh my gosh the unapproved artificial Official coloring ingredient Ponciao 4R or Acid Red 18. The food coloring is said to be used in Europe, Asia, and Australia and was previously banned in Denmark, Belgium, France, and Switzerland. Guys, did you hear that? They literally said that this biscuit is marketed towards the health conscious because it's sugar free, this free, everything free, whatever. But you know what it's not free of? Chemicals that can literally cause cancer? Like, what the heck? These people are scammers. We out here just trying to eat healthy and stuff. I'm not trying to catch something that might me, you know? So not been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, Ooh. who have, since 2000, seized Chinese-produced oh haw flakes gosh. on numerous occasions. So it's very sketchy is what they're saying. Guys, if you're ever strolling through China looking for a snack to go with your tea in your hand, don't eat haw flakes. 
Smarties, <gasps> also known as Rockets. Rockets. I see those now, all the time. Now, I'm these candies aren't banned everywhere in the United States, but rather banned in certain schools in the U.S. Okay. That leads to the question, but why, though? Yeah, why? I remember Rockets being omnipresent in my candy bag while I was trick-or-treating back in the day. All the time, I never bro. I these things would have the potential of killing me someday. Yeah. As it turns out, though, either I didn't have a wild imagination or I was fortunately unaware of how drugs were consumed. <gasps> oh. Kids apparently have discovered a novel way of consuming these sweets, though. It involves crushing the rockets into a fine powder, lining up the fine powder on a smooth surface, and then s them up your nose oh, to raise a little dollar. Man, why you gotta do that, huh? I mean, I'm sure you could crush up just about anything, but that doesn't mean you gotta do it. Don't ruin a perfectly good candy for the rest of us, you know? It's pretty ridiculous, and it really sounds like something a bored kid would do. Yeah. But in all seriousness, it has health risks like any other powder going up your oh. nose. That being asthma attacks, long-term breathing problems, and although rare, nasal maggots. Woo! Okay, guys, that sounds super sketchy to me. I guess moral of the story is don't crush up your candy and do weird stuff with it. I mean, there's other ways of having fun than doing that kind of stuff with your candy. First candy we got are these white Christmas tree cakes. They're kind of like Twinkies, but in a Christmas form. You might not find presents under those trees, but you will find sugar and icing. So that's good enough for me. Actually, maybe even better. But you see, one day a family was just trying to enjoy these cakes during the holiday season. They rip up in the box and take a big bite. And what do they find? A freaking toenail in one. Like, are you freaking serious? A dirty rotten toe. Get a candy bar in a christmas candy bar santa why you do me like that so i'm gonna take a guess and say that instead of these cakes smelling like a nice pine tree they smell like rotten feet oh delicious wouldn't even be christmas if you don't drink enough eggnog to make yourself pass out or maybe just pee your pants but anyways, eggnog. And more specifically, it looks like this family's drinking plant-based eggnog. That's cool. Less dairy equals less sore stomachs. Hopefully. But anyways, this person was pouring some eggnog to go give to his grandpa, I'm assuming? And he pours one glass. He pours a second glass. He pours a third glass. Everything's cool. But then. Ha oh, ha ha, family. But then. <laughs> <gasps> Remember those Christmas tree cakes I was telling you about before? Well, this dude found a real Christmas tree in his eggnog. A full-on pine leaf branch in his eggnog. But he has a log in his nog. Explain that one. I don't know about you, but I think that drink is cursed. I know y'all were trying to go plant-based, but doesn't that mean you're supposed to protect the trees? Not eat them. Or drink them in this case, or... Actually, not even drink them. You would choke on them. That's a Christmas a little too hard to swallow. And if you thought that one was bad, oh, you just wait, family. Because now we got some candy canes. Personally, one of my favorites. You can bite them, chew them, suck them. You can pretty much have them in your mouth or whatever you're doing. Going to a Christmas party? Candy cane in the mouth. Going to school? Candy cane in the mouth. Going to a funeral? Candy cane in the mouth! Mm -hmm. Uh, mm, mm. <clears throat> yeah, maybe not that one. But you get what I'm saying. Universal candy. But next time you start sucking on a candy cane without really paying attention, I think you probably should pay attention because... Look at this! A needle in the candy cane! Sticking right out about to poke you like your face is some kind of balloon ready to be popped. That's not cool. And definitely not safe. Who would even do such a thing? Why do you hate Christmas? Sounds like somebody might be the Grinch. Well, you know what, Mr. I Hate Christmas Grinch? Next time you're sleeping at night, I'm gonna dye all of that green fur of yours blue. Then you're gonna turn into Huggy Wuggy and we'll see how many more people hate you. Spoiler alert, many more than they already do now. <laughs> Family, it's almost December 25th, so that just means one thing. Santa's coming soon. To town. To your town. To my town. To everybody's town. And he got presents. Only if you've been good, though. But to tie us over before the real Santa arrives, we got this chocolate version. Mmm. Eating life-size versions of people we don't know. Delicious. Actually, before we say delicious, maybe we should think again, because when this person opened up the chocolate Santa Claus, he found something not too chocolatey. And not too Christmassy, either. Because he found... <clears throat> Sorry, family. <clears throat> Cause he found. <clears throat> Can we try again? Cause he found under. 
Underwear. Or maybe a better word would be granny panties? I don't know, but all I know is that thing is not edible. And not Santa approved either. Whoever did this is going on the naughty list. End of story. I hope you get cold. <laughs> better yet, I hope you get nothing. Not even underwear. Who's laughing now when you're gonna be going commando for the rest of your life? This is a gingerbread house. People usually make them around Christmas time and then put icing all around the different pieces and stick them together to make a pretty house. You can put jube jubes on top, bubble gum, Tic Tacs. Usually these gingerbread houses are sold as kits. So you get the candy part, the house part, and the icing part all together in one box. Well, everything was going well for this family as they were building the house together. But then when they were squeezing out the last bit of icing out of the tube, something squeezed out that you don't want to see and something that you're probably gonna eat later. Something that's probably your worst nightmare to find if you're going out to eat at a restaurant. And we're talking about hair. Long, dark chunks of it. Ugh. I guess this family found the hair and the icing, but for some reason decided to keep making the house? I get everyone has different preferences for their taste of food, but why y'all's preference gotta be hairy? If you like food with hair in it so much, why don't you just eat your own? And this one's free! Okay, this Christmas candy I actually do not like. It's called a fruit cake, pound cake, disgusting cake. I don't know, but it's nasty. So these people bought an already made cake, but they noticed when they opened it that it had a crack in the middle. And upon further inspection, when they opened up that crack even wider, they started to notice a really disgusting smell. And I'm not even talking about the fruit cake. I'm talking about a fishy smell. You know, like seafood? They open up the cake completely and what do they find? A ripped off top of a tuna cake. Can. Like what? I mean, I get fruitcake is disgusting and fish can also sometimes be gross too. But that doesn't mean you can just mix two gross things together and then that makes it good. They were both disgusting to begin with and now you just made them even worse. No thank you. This next one is a bit of a mystery. We got a chocolate gingerbread man. Pretty cool, pretty yummy. But when the people went to open it on the inside, they found some white kind of fluff ball. But the thing about this fluff ball is that it didn't just look like something from a fabric. It looks like it would have came off from somebody's beard. I don't know about you family, but when I think of gingerbread, when I think of Christmas time, and when I think about white fluff ball, I'm thinking of Santa's beard. Did this fluff come from Santa's beard himself? I don't know. You tell me. Comment down below if you think this is from Santa's beard or not. Because I kind of think it is. Or maybe it's just from my beard. Y'all have just never seen it before. Speaking of weird fluff balls, this person put their hand in a bag of uh, Santa-shaped jube jubes. And they also found a weird fluff ball. This time not white. And this time not looking very hairy. It kind of just looks like lint that you'd find from a clothes dryer. Or maybe just some musty, crusty, dusty dust that you would find in a dirty air vent. Either way, not the kind of candy I was thinking about. My grandma used to eat these kind of cookies all the time. I think they're shortbread cookies and they come in this really old school looking tin that also can double as something you can hit your brother's head with. I say from experience. But anyways, this person cracked open a new can of cookies and although they did find many cookies, they also found something underneath the cookies that they were not looking to find. A lighter. Kids can't use those. Adults shouldn't even use those because they're dangerous. Y'all never want to be around somebody who's mad with a lighter in their hand. Things get a little hot. Burning hot, if you know what I mean. I don't know if it was the person who was packaging these cookies that day that accidentally dropped their lighter inside of the can, or if someone was just trying to do somebody else a favor and knew that they would need a light to start their fireplace with. In that case, that's kind of nice of them. Good job, Christmas. My mom is obsessed with these candies and they are called peppermint patties. They're like a minty candy on the inside with a chocolate coating on the outside. Kind of like a hamburger patty, but chocolate version. Mmm. But instead of finding mint on the inside of this candy, somebody found a staple. What in the chicken nugget is a staple doing inside of a peppermint candy? You trying to staple a candy to your school paper? I don't think so. So what the staple was doing in here, I have no idea. And I guess we'll remain a Christmas mystery forever. Except to the person who probably ended up eating one of those staples. Yeah, to them, it's not a Christmas mystery. Probably a Christmas funeral. Ooh. Our first spooky Halloween candy are these gummy eyeballs. Yeah. I don't know about you, family, but when I'm hungry, I would prefer not to eat a human body part. Oh. Anyway, so allegedly, apparently, this person bought some gummy eyeballs from the store. They were planning to hand them out for Halloween when everybody goes trick-or-treating. But before they did, they decided to eat one of those gummy eyeballs by themselves. Don't really know why, but whatever. <laughs> Look what they found! A spider! 
I keep pointing? Why, <gasps> family? Why? How this thing was found inside that candy, I have no idea. But what I do know is whoever did that needs to start playing pin the tail on the donkey. Cause he got that thing right in the center of the eyeball and got himself a bullseye. Perfect shot. Family, comment down below, yummy, as the secret word of today's video, and I'll heart your comments. The next spookiest thing found in Halloween candy was inside of these pink bubble gums. No, family, we went over this. I am not a pink bubble gum. I'm a pink little piggy. Who also happens to chew bubble gum. Well, these people allegedly bought some pink bubble gum from the store. They filled up their pretty green Halloween bucket to be able to share it with all the kids. Apparently, one of the people's breasts was... <coughs> Little stinky! So they decided to choose some bubble gum. Sweet family, bubble gum is the best. It's delicious, it freshens your breath, and it's super fun to chew. What possibly could go wrong? Duh! Wait a chicken nugget second! What is that? Wait a second, family. We gotta look a little closer. Closer and closer! Oh! <gasps> I think I know what's found inside of that bubblegum piece. It's a band-aid! Wrapped around the bubble gum. Family, make sure you watch the end of today's video to see a candy that will make your mouth go on fire! I'm sorry, Mr. Bubblegum Man, sir. Did you get yourself a bobo? Because it looks like somebody is trying to bandage you up. Just like I tried to bandage up my friend over here. Uh, Mr. Ch chicken Nuggy, sir. Look, he has a bobo. I told him to not eat so many chicken nuggies at once, but he's just a baby. But he didn't understand. And another secret that I told him is that he's going to be available this November for any of the family who wants to get him. Because he's the newest chicken nugget member of the family. Baby Nuggy. Available this November if you want to add him to your family. So stay tuned. All right, family, this next one is not an actual Halloween candy, but a Halloween bug. <laughs> Look at the cute puppy with a pumpkin on his head. Does the puppy win the best costume award? Well, I mean, hey, it's better than mine. I'm just a stinky pig. Oh. So allegedly somebody bought this Halloween book just trying to have fun for Halloween. Maybe they wanted to bring it to school. Maybe they wanted to use it to draw all their favorite colors of the rainbow. The family. Ah, uh, yeah. They didn't get to do that. Because when they opened up their super fun, super cute, super festive Halloween book and flipped through all the different pages, instead of getting ready to draw, they got ready to uh, scream! Because look what they found inside the book! Two giant spiders that, uh, that actually kind of look like they're made out of gummy. Huh? Wait a second, maybe we did find Halloween candy after all! Yay! Secret candy inside of a book? Mm, actually, I don't think you should eat candy that you don't know where it comes from. Because even though that spider candy looks super duper delicious, you don't know what's inside of it and you do not know who put it there. Could be from a bad guy. Family, I have no idea how those gummy spiders ended up inside of that Halloween book. Maybe somebody was trying to play a prank or something. But if they were, can you tell them that me and baby Nuggy are super duper mad at them? <laughs> because they scared us. Now I'm gonna have to deal with him all night having nightmares. The next spooky thing found in a Halloween candy is super duper spooky family. Look at these Halloween party the syringes? What? That looks like something I used to take my medicine out of. My mom would say, open up, Alexia. Time for your daily dose of liquid medicine. And now. Then she would usually get it all over my face because I'm not opening my mouth for that. Medicine tastes gross. I'd rather eat candy. You did kind of like this candy. Uh, but what do those things say on top of there? P -p 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 boys. And there's also a skull and crossbones. Isn't that the sign for when people go? Oop. Oh. Anyways, family, apparently this red liquid inside of there is not supposed to be ketchup. Is it not supposed to be blood? It's supposed to be candy. Well, then I guess it's supposed to taste good. But when this person went to go eat the candy and squirt it all in their mouths, they allegedly noticed that one of them was looking a little different from the rest. They squirted some of it out into the sink and allegedly found some hairballs. Oh, what the chicken nugget? How do you get hairballs inside a candy? And how do you get that much? 
Either the people who made this candy were trying to get people to eat some hair, or the people who made this candy have a pet bear in their garage, and he was trying to play with the candy before they could end up serving it. Bob the bear gets kind of hungry sometimes. <laughs> Halloween party favors. Well, family, these things look like the same things you get at Christmas time. Your family puts on your plate before you eat dinner, and then you twist it open and find a gift inside. Oh, man, family, and this looks like it's the Halloween version of that. What gift are we gonna find inside of these ones? I can't wait. Oh, uh, uh, what, what is this one? Oh, we chose the pink one, and it looks like there is something inside. Oh, I can't wait. Is it gonna pop up? like a surprise. Wait, wait what, what is that? that? That doesn't look like a surprise. That actually looks like dirty newspaper. Or dare I say, used toilet paper? No, 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 family. But, but used toilet paper is definitely not a gift. The only time that would ever be a gift is if you couldn't go potty for a couple days. And then finally one day you could and then boom! Grateful for the toilet paper. But still kind of bleh. Anyways, next Halloween candy. Oh, my favorite! Chocolate-covered pumpkins! Whoa, look how many of the chocolate pumpkins they have, family! And they're even putting it inside of a Halloween bucket! Oh, I love Halloween so much because you get to dress up as whatever you want, but most importantly, you get to eat whatever candy you want. And, well, if your mommy says yes, and your tummy doesn't start hurting too much from all the candy, because you can't eat more candy if you're about to puke. Well, family, allegedly these people were all excited to eat their chocolate pumpkins. They were so excited that they took one and started unwrapping the wrapper. Just about to take that chocolate and pop it in their mouth when they found uh, something that they were not supposed to find in the chocolate ball. What is wrapped around that chocolate ball? And what does that chocolate ball kind of look like a wrapped mummy? Is this supposed to be for Halloween? Or is that chocolate ball just wrapped in dental floss? Whoa! I can't tell if that's super spooky and super bad. Or if I take that chocolate to my dentist and then maybe he'll let me eat it. Because then right after I can just floss my teeth. Is that chocolate? Or more like flossolid? <laughs> no, seriously, mommy, can I eat it now? Because it still looks tasty. Oh, family, look, that's the candy corn candy that you always see in Halloween. It's supposed to be like corn on the cob, but candy version and Halloween version and spooky version. But it also kind of looks like a lollipop with the three different colors. I mean, there is always a huge debate in Halloween if you like this candy or if you don't. I think people either love it or really hate it. So which one are you, family? Do you like it or no? Comment down below. So I guess whoever bought this candy likes it because clearly they bought it to eat it. But, uh, family, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a secret. They didn't eat this candy at all. None of it. Not even one. Because when they put their hand in the bucket to grab a piece of candy, or should I say corn, they grabbed one out and were about to put it in their mouth. But look! Look inside of that piece of candy corn. It's a nail. Why is there a nail inside that candy corn? Family, I need it. Because if somebody put that nail inside of that candy, then that is not good. And I think it means they were trying to hurt us. Because family, I'm not sure if you knew this or not, but you cannot <laughs> eat nails. No, no, no. That is on my list of what not to eat. Whoa, look at this bag filled of chocolate Halloween skulls. This person must have went trick-or-treating at like a bajillion different houses. Because look how many they have. It's like my dream. I also love their Halloween kitty cat bag. It looks like a spooky black Halloween cat. I'm pretty sure those things are supposed to be haunted. So I think this person's daddy or mommy was inspecting their candy before they got the kid to eat it. And when they were making sure that all the candy was over, Okay, with absolutely nothing wrong with it. They found out that, uh, yep, there absolutely is something wrong with it. Because look what they found inside. Allegedly inside of this person's candy was a giant bug. Family, there is a giant bug inside of this Halloween candy. Do you think the kid is gonna eat it? If he does, that is super duper icky. But also, if he does, it might add a little bit more protein. So maybe this bug candy isn't such a bad idea. Mmm, tastes like a fried potato chip. Crunchy. 
Whoa, this one's my favorite Halloween candy yet. It's a lollipop in the shape of a haunted witch. You know, witches family. You know, the spooky girls who make a giant potion and wear the pointy hat. And they also go flying on their witches' brooms. Uh, yeah, those ones. But I don't know if this witch lollipop can do all those things. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to eat a lollipop and the lollipop's not supposed to come to life. But if that's what's about to happen here, then uh, I don't know if I want to see that. Allegedly, whoever bought this lollipop opened up the wrapper, ready to take a big bite. Oh, look at the witch's face. It looks so spooky and her nose is so big. But that's okay because a bigger nose means more lollipop to eat. And I am fine with that. So they took a giant bite inside of their marshmallow lollipop. Everything seemed fine. Everything seemed normal. But now take off the top of the witch's head. Peep your eye a little bit inside the lolly. And family, there's a baby chili pepper in there. <laughs> what? This is not even make sense. I thought the rapper said spooky lollipop, not spicy lollipop. Because even that would make your tongue go all fire. But maybe that's what they wanted to do because Halloween is spooky and so is fire. They wanted a magical Halloween show. Except I think that show would cost you your tongue. Because after you eat that spicy thing, I don't think it's ever gonna work again. Look at this giant Tootsie Roll. Is that not the biggest Tootsie Roll you have ever seen? I guess crazy candy comes out at crazy times of the year. That thing is giant just like a giant zombie. <laughs> oh, they're about to open the giant Tootsie Roll. I am so excited. Oh, uh, what? Family, we've been scammed. We've been tricked. On the outside, it looks like the candy is one giant Tootsie Roll. You open it up. It's just a bunch of baby Tootsie Rolls. Oh, man. And family, the disappointments don't end there. Because allegedly, when somebody went to go eat these baby Tootsie Rolls, it looked like a regular Tootsie Roll at first. Then when they looked closer to the candy, there is something sticking out of the Tootsie Roll. And family, that does not look like more candy. It looks like some kind of wooden stick. Uh, wait a second. Oh, they're trying to squish around the Tootsie Roll to open it up. But the candy's so squishy and stretchy that they can't do it. <laughs> this is so funny. Maybe there's not even anything stuck in the Tootsie Roll. Maybe it was just all in our head. <laughs> what is that? It looks like there's white fluffy fur inside of it. Or kind of the inside of a dirty Q-tip. Whatever it is, I it looks too fluffy and you definitely cannot eat that. Family, if you see any candy like this at Halloween, make sure not to eat it. And make sure your mommy and daddies check all your candy first. Or you don't accidentally eat a bug. <laughs> The first candy we have are these delicious cream eggs. We got the creamy one that's supposed to be filled with cream. And then the caramel one that's supposed to be filled with caramel. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Because allegedly when that dude went to open up that caramel egg, he didn't find no caramel. He found some slime gel, Hulk gel. Weird evil green looking goop thing. That should not be in a chocolate egg. Like, seriously, what is that? You think they mix up the bunny and bird eggs for bunny and bird poop. That don't look right. But just think on the bright side, family. Now my dude's got colorful hands to do some Easter finger painting. Ugh. Maybe I'll pass. Family, comment down below green goop as the secret word of today's video and I'll heart your comment with my dirty fingers. Whoopsies. Next candy we got is this giant white chocolate Easter bunny. Oh my gosh, that thing is so big. It looks so tasty. I want one. So obviously the person's super excited to eat this giant bunny. They open up the box and slide out the bunny. Yep, we got the bunny head, the bunny ears, the bunny feet, and the bunny tail? Huh? That don't look like no fluffy bunny tail. It looks like toilet paper. And it looks used. Ooh. Mr. Chocolate Maker, sir, I don't care how white and fluffy you wanted the bunny tail to be. You can't use something that people go to the potty with. That's not normal or edible. Eating toilet paper is the same as eating my vegetables, dad. 
drives, and really depressing. Hmm. Family, make sure to watch the end of today's video to see some kind of snake stuck inside of someone's Easter candy. What the? And if you don't want to eat a bunny, you can always be a bunny by putting on some bunny ears. This person bought some bunny ears that came with a big chocolate Easter egg. Then when they went to put the bunny ears on their head, they noticed something a little odd. Something a little green. Something a little spiky. Because allegedly they found a cactus on their head. Well, not on their head. They found it on the bunny ears. But then they put the bunny ears on the head and ow! The little sharp. I don't know where these people found a cactus or why they thought it'd be a good idea to put it under these bunny ears. That's just mean. If you don't like somebody's hairstyle, you can just tell them nicely. You don't gotta be poking some people's brains out with the cactus. That's dark. And evil. That's not something the Easter Bunny would do. And that's the job for Evil Vanny. If you know, you know. Mmm, peach flavor marshmallows. The perfect spring snack. Now when your mommy tells you you gotta eat more fruits and vegetables, just show her this bag. You're practically eating a peach right off the tree. Same thing. So allegedly this person went to the store, bought the bag of candy. Oh, d I mean, fruit. And when they went to open the bag and stick their hand inside, they didn't find fruit. And they also didn't find any marshmallows. They found this. A peach flavored marshmallow. But with a band-aid wrapped around it. Why? Why would somebody do that? Why would they ruin a perfectly good peach? Thank you, Peaches. I know. My dog's name is Peaches and he doesn't appreciate the disrespect. I don't know about you, family, but that band-aid looks a little dirty. And it also looks a little used. <sighs> I don't know how the marshmallow got so hurt that he needed a band-aid. Like, dude, you're literally made of fluff and cushion. The marshmallows are weak. They probably cry to their mamas, too. Well, actually, I do that a lot. Almost every day. And maybe right now if I see another spooky Easter candy. Mom, these are scary. Okay, fine, marshmallow, you get a pass. But I am definitely not eating you. Try again with the next guy. These are bubblegum Easter eggs. Oh, they look so cool. So colorful. And I just want to chew on them. I bet you the pink one tastes like bubblegum. And the blue one tastes like blueberries. And the yellow ones. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. Hopefully it's not apple juice. If you know what I mean. Allegedly somebody bought these bubblegums. And when they went to put one in their mouth and... Chew it! Their teeth ended up touching something else other than just bubblegum. When they took it out of their mouth, it was kind of hard to tell what was inside. It looked a little shiny and also a little pointy. But with a closer look and a bigger inspection, they found out it was a clothespin or a clothes needle or a sewing pin. I don't know, family, but it was sharp. Really dangerous. What if the person would have ate that? Not safe. That's why before I eat some of my meals, my mommy cuts up my food for me. I gotta know what's inside my macaroni and cheese before I put it in my mouth. You never know if something's hiding in those hot dogs. In those macaronis. Or in that slimy ketchup. I'm suspicious. And clearly I should be because there's stuff hiding in food everywhere. Allegedly. Who would have thought that chickens grow eggs and needles in their tummies? Hmm. Speaking of things laying eggs, this giant chocolate chicken hen thing. I think it's a chicken. And it even comes with its own Easter eggs at the bottom. What a steal. So allegedly, this person opened up their box of chocolate chicken. <laughs> Chocolate chicken. I made a rhyme. When they went to eat the chocolate, apparently the chicken wasn't done laying eggs. I'm serious, family. Look. They held up the chicken and the chicken was popping out eggs just like popcorn. But not as tasty. Because look, those are not eggs or popcorn. They look like weird slimy pills. What the? I don't know if this is some new type of Easter egg they're trying out, but I don't like it. I want the regular chocolate Easter eggs back. Not the goopy ones that look like liquid apple juice. Ugh. Easter's ruined. JK, we still got the chocolate. <laughs> Family, make sure to watch the end of today's video to see the weird looking snake inside of the Easter candy. Look at these Easter bunny lollipops. They're so adorable. And this person
person has a whole bag to themselves. That's like my dream. Well, actually not really because apparently and allegedly when this person went to open up the bag, they found something in it that uh, didn't quite look right. Look, right there. No, family, look a little closer. Yes, right there. Do you see that shiny thing? That ain't no lollipop. And if we look more closer than that and pour everything out of the bag, you'll see that that wasn't no silver lollipop. It's sharp scissors. What in the chicken nugget is sharp scissors doing inside of Easter candy? Those bunnies are just babies. They don't know how to use scissors. And I know for a fact they ain't using scissor safety. My mommy would be disappointed. Unlike me who just graduated from Scissor Safety Academy last week. I got A pluses in all my classes. I'm a scissor professional. Ooh. A giant Easter egg filled with jelly beans. Whoa. They're even every color of the rainbow. Well, actually, I think it's missing a few, but it's close. We got yellow, pink, blue, and black. I don't think black is the color of the rainbow. And what the heck is that? Brown? Brown isn't supposed to be there either. And to be honest, now that I look at it closer, those black and brown things don't look like jelly beans. They kind of look like chocolate chips. And an almond. Well, that's kind of random. But on the package, it doesn't say chocolate chips or single almond anywhere. So why is it in the candy? I don't know who allegedly found this inside of their jelly bean bag. And I don't really know if they should be happy or mad about it. Pretty suspicious they found things that aren't supposed to be there in there but at the same time who could be mad about chocolate chips oh i'm so confused all i know family is my mommy told me not to eat anything given to me by a stranger or if the packet says jelly beans and there ain't no jelly beans in there then you probably shouldn't eat that either easter bunny failing us again next year we're probably not even gonna get jelly beans oh, we're just gonna get jello and y'all know that ain't the same oh if you don't like eating real carrots, then I found a solution for you. Milk chocolate covered carrots. Or just milk chocolate that look like carrots. Easter version. But I wouldn't get too excited too quick, family. Because apparently when this person went to open up their box of chocolate covered carrots, everything seemed normal at first. But then when they went to actually grab one of the chocolates and take off the wrapper, that's when things started to get a little scary. Or should I say hairy? Because look at this. You might think, huh, that's an oddly looking chocolate. Well, that's because it's covered in a giant hairball. Cat hair, dog hair, human hair, I don't know. But what I do know is that I'd rather eat vegetables than have to eat that. That's nasty and fluffy and hairy and... <laughs> yeah, nope. Still not good. I guess it was too good to be true. We gotta just eat real vegetables tonight. Just block your nose and swallow. Yep, works. Every time. Uh. Look at this. A giant golden wrapped bunny. Is that Peter Cottontail? Because it really looks like him. And if so, dang family, fix your hair. We're about to make someone famous. And also eat him. Huh, kind of weird. Anyways, this looks like a super delicious chocolate Easter bunny. Until this person opened up the wrapper and allegedly found a hole inside of the back of the bunny. And you might think, huh, that's odd. What could possibly be inside the hole? Chocolate sauce, caramel sauce, whipped cream. Uh, no, none of the above. Allegedly, when the person started shaking the chocolate bunny, this came out. What is that, yellow and red sprinkles? Some kind of candy inside of the chocolate? Nope. It's chili flakes. You don't like the thing you put on top of a pizza? I don't know what kind of spicy chocolate bunny this candy company's going for. But I don't think that will taste that good. Especially how much you'll be buzzing your tongue. That looks hot. And not in a good way. Ew. Now it's time for the Easter candy with a weird snake inside. Oh, family, just wait. From the outside, this looks like a really cute little chiclet with some tasty jelly beans inside. But then allegedly when this person took out the little chicken and reached in to grab some jelly beans, they found this! A really disgusting 
disgusting looking gross worm thing that is super long and super pointy. I don't know why that's in there with the little chicken. And I also don't know why that thing looks so dirty. Yeah. Like what were they doing with that? Fishing out a dirty sink? That's nasty. Good thing is, is if Mr. Chicken ever needs a back scratcher, he can always use that. But we can't guarantee that he won't get a rash or infection after. Because I think that thing's filled with a lot of do not eat it! Even if it's right beside delicious jelly beans. You probably shouldn't eat those either. If the snake is evil, then so are the jelly beans. Oh man. The chicken's still cute though. I like him. A little bit of beaver urine, it becomes one of the core ingredients in achieving the flavor that tastes of vanilla, raspberry, and strawberry. You're kidding. The is the use of castorium has actually been deemed the same by the Food and Drug Administration, calling this substance non-toxic to taste and non-toxic to skin. Non-toxic to skin? Sure. But you're trying to tell me it's non-toxic to taste? I don't think so. You're trying to tell me that eating a beaver's... Peach is not toxic to my mouth? Well, all right then. Dicing on top of the cake, though, is that castorium has been used for the last 80 years oh. and has been listed under quote-unquote natural ingredients in the list of ingredients for flavor. Guys, this is why you always gotta read the label. And even when you do read the label, they're still trying to catfish you. 80 years of just sweeping under the radar. We've been eating beavers. Peaches! And it's categorized under natural flavor? Ugh! I'm disgusted! Number nine, McDonald's apple pie. Oh, McDonald's no, not the apple pie. Versus. Who can forget the great taste in Big Macs and McFlurry oh, at McDonald's? Also, let's not forget their apple pies, which is the food of American pastimes. Sweet and tasty, especially when it's hot. But we have never stopped to wonder exactly how these apple pies are made oh, and what no. exactly goes into uh, them apart from apples and sweet oh, sauce. Oh, it's going to well, be bad. the answer is L-cysteine. L-cysteine is basically an amino acid that, although oh. Not necessary for adults, it is very important for the consumption by infants. Okay, so if it's important for kids, then maybe it's not so bad that it's in the apple pie. Maybe we can keep eating these delicious treats, guys. No worries. Also, a key ingredient used in making apple pies. Mm. What's wrong with it, you may ask? Well, it is the way that it's made. L-cysteine is made through the process of hydrolysis, which core ingredients include feathers of ducks and hog hair. Huh? And in some cases, it is also rumored that it consists of human hair. The ingredients are bonded together with water to achieve a liquid that is used in the apple pie to give it a great taste. What uh. makes it worse is that the use of L-cysteine has been banned in the oh. European Union, but not the United States, where it is still used in large quantities. So you're trying to tell me that they put hair and duck feathers in my apple pie? Excuse me while I go throw up. Maybe I'll be sticking with the McFlurries from now on. Or wait, McDonald's McFlurries made with vanilla ice cream. Oh my God. <gasps> Eight, beer. It's time to crack open a cold eh. one with the boys on this spot. Beer is the third most consumed beverage in the world after tea and water, and none of us have even wondered what beer contains. Apart from alcohol, there is another secret ingredient that is used to make the beer finer. That ingredient is called Isinglass. Huh? What's Isinglass, you may ask? Yeah. Well, in short, Isinglass is essentially the extracts of dried fish bladders. No, no, no. It doesn't seem weird at all. Common practice to use this ingredient for beers, especially to make beer and even some wines more oh. clear to look at. Guinness has gone on to state that they have been using the ingredient in their beers for over 250 oh. years. And nobody knew at all. Catfish number two. Man, they should really be warning people about this. Thank God I don't drink beer. And have just now began to reduce their use of Isinglass in their beers. Uh. Still might make some people think twice about picking up a beer next time round. Uh. Number seven, red food dye. Red velvet cupcake, Starbucks, uh. strawberry frappuccino, and red strawberry candy. What? what do all of these have in common? Well, not only are they delicious, but they use red food dye, which is made out of bugs. Uh. Specifically, the cochineal scale, which contains no, acid in its stomach no, that no, is used no. to get the bright color of red food dye. Uh. 
Uh. These bugs are crushed, and when the crushed powder is mixed with water, it creates a strong red dye that we consume on a regular basis. You'll be surprised by the number of things that include cochineal scale in its ingredients. Uh. Things like yogurt, <gasps> juices, and even pink pastries what? all include these crushed Not powders. the macaroons! Guys, just think of how many things that you eat per day that are red. Red juices, red candies, red chocolates, red cupcakes. The whole world is freaking red, okay? So pretty much I'm saying that we eat bugs every single day. <gasps> Guys, don't they say you are what you eat? So if we eat bugs every single day, then does that mean we're bugs? Oh my God, what if we wake up one day and we're just not human anymore? We're just bugs. The world is bugs. The, wor the world is just one giant bug. What would that be like? It's the main ingredient that provides the color and taste to these items. In 2012, it was revealed that Starbucks <gasps> originally crushed cochineal bugs in its strawberry frappuccino, Whoa. which caused an absolute outrage. It is still used today. You go to Starbucks and order a frappuccino with oat milk and no whip, thinking that you're being healthy and vegan and stuff. But no, Starbucks is secretly slipping you some bugs in there. Wow, thanks Starbucks. You shouldn't have. No, really, you shouldn't have. Safe by the Food and Drug Administration. You can find Ugh. it in the ingredients section under these names. Carmine, cochineal extract, and natural red four. Ugh. Number six, chewing gum. Throughout history, mankind has been chewing on all manners Not of different plants chewing gum. And like chewing gum's flavor is literally mint. So why put anything other than mint in there? You know? Why you gotta complicate it at bugs and boogers and peaches? Man, we can't catch a break. The ancient Greeks used to chew gum made from the barks of the mastic tree. South Americans used to chew on the leaves of the coca plant, which is used to make cocaine. <gasps> it was in the 1860s that a pharmacist called John Colgan created the first flavored chewing gum called Taffy Tulu. Today, there are several popular brands of chewing gum, such as Trident, Eclipse, and Orbit, all competing with one another for the privilege of finding their way into our mouths. The base of the gum used to be made of a natural substance called chicle, which is a sap-like substance produced in the bark of a sabadilla tree. Chicle was prominent for its use in the production of chewing gum in the past. However, these days, only a few small brands still use it in their gum base. But still, the majority of brands have switched to adding synthetic rubber in the base of chewing gum instead. Apparently, the synthetic rubber is much easier and cheaper to manufacture, although that doesn't discard the fact that you're literally eating rubber. Okay, guys, I don't know about you, but I don't think that one's that bad. I mean, you're chewing on the sap of a plant or a tree or something at least it's natural when it comes to energy drinks there is no drink as well known or consumed as red bull mm -hmm. the drink has sold over 5 billion cans since 2012 and is widely available in 171 countries wow. around the world with the name red bull a lot of people actually thought that this energy drink included bull semen and bull urine Ugh. as a core ingredient well that has proved to be a hoax however oh, those God. ingredients are probably even more healthier than than what is actually in Red Bull. While Red Bull has a sugar intake uh -huh. that is less than most soda drinks, it contains up to 80 milligrams of caffeine, which is like drinking two cups of coffee. Uh -huh. While that makes it why the drink gives us such a tremendous boost of energy, it also makes the drink incredibly addictive. Another harmful element present in the drink is its main sweetener, aspartame, uh -huh. which can produce That's cancer bad. such as leukemia, which is blood cancer and lymphoma. The Whoa. drink also contains synthetic taurine, an ingredient that is reported to include high blood pressure, oh, strokes. Guys, this is so sketchy. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Energy drinks are not good for you guys. If you're tired, take a nap. And if you're still tired and you can't nap, drink a glass of water, pop a lemon slice in there and call it a day. You don't need these sketchy energy drinks in ya to live your life. Puzzle down a Red Bull every once in a while. Try not to become too independent on it for your energy. Yeah, drink. it ain't or good. Try Try some organic coffee or green tea instead. Mm. And number three, we have McDonald's chicken nuggets. <gasps> what do you oh do gosh, when you not the nuggets, anything but the nuggets. The nuggets and the McFlurry are like the only things I like at McDonald's. Hmm, guys, I don't want to look. 
by rummaging around in the kitchen to cook something up. For most people, calling your favorite fast food chain and ordering in is one of the best ideas. Whether it may be Wendy's, KFC, Domino's, or any other of the multiple brands available, you can certainly look forward to a hot and delicious meal made from only the freshest of ingredients under the highest standards of safety and cleanliness. Well, say hello to mechanically separated chicken. Oh! The process of creating this chicken paste is by forcing the meat through a sieve under high pressures, which turns it into this puree. Oh! This includes all parts of the chicken, such as bones, eyes, beaks. Did they just say eyes? Beaks? Bones? Oh my god, I knew I wasn't gonna want to watch this one. Oh! Fast food outlets have been rumored to use this process of producing their chicken patties <gasps> and nuggets. However, none more than McDonald's and their chicken nuggets. Guys, they can't be serious about those chicken nuggets. My stomach is turning after hearing that. I literally want to throw up. Like, why they gotta ruin chicken nuggets, bro? Why the nuggets? Why? Why couldn't it be that stupid gross fish sandwich they carry or, or the salad? Well, just kidding. I actually really like their salad, but you get what I mean. Meatball bubble gum. Ew. Not sure who would want to chew on meatball flavored gum. Um, I could tell you right now that nobody wants to chew on meatball flavored bubble gum. I don't care if it's Halloween, Easter, or Santa Claus brought them to me. I ain't chewing on it. As an Italian, I'm offended. <laughs> These hearty Italian style meatball bubble gums do not belong in your candy bag. We're not sure if it even qualifies as candy. But no. one thing is definite. If you want to freshen up your breath, Meatball flavor is not the one for you. Well, thank you, genius, for telling me that. Before this, I thought the key to fresh breath was eating onions and beef jerky. But now I know it's none of them. Zit poppers. Ew. Who hasn't watched satisfying pimple popping videos? But is it a good idea to make poppable zits in candy no. form? Zit poppers are soft and gummy. When you squeeze them, a gooey red substance oozes out, much like the original experience. These plump and ripe zits are so. Oh, wait, family, hold up. Was that me? Eating a candy pimple in a video about one Halloween candy not to eat? And I was just eating it? Oh, yeah. Must have forgot about that one. Popping a zit and eating the ooze is not anyone's cup of tea. I mean, it might not be my cup of tea, but I guess it was my cup of dessert. Because I ate that thing whole. Whoopsies. Gummy boo-boos. Huh? A band-aid is a lifesaver when it comes to scraped knees, but would you ever like to eat that? Would I ever like to do what now with band-aids? I know y'all didn't just say eat them, because we all know what goes on band-aids. Blood. And also infections. Ugh. That's not candy. It is an edible bandage like chewy candy. They took it too far with a scab with blood on it. Maybe it'll look good on a Halloween candy platter. Would you ever try it? Is that a serious question? No, Mr. Candy Man, I would never try a band-aid flavored candy. Not only is it disgusting, I think it's dangerous too. Poor little Jimmy's gonna fall off his bike one day and ask his sister Angela to go get him a band-aid. And what does Angela bring back? Oh, not a real band-aid? Oh, no, no, no. A fake band-aid. Better yet, a candy band-aid. And last time I checked, sugar doesn't heal wounds. Jimmy, you screwed. Crime scene candy. Oh! Okay, I know I was just talking about ketchup and uh, other weird things, but I didn't think they would take it that far. A vial of blood, a vial of urine, and a vial of saliva are not the things you would expect to see on a candy aisle. So then how about we just don't put it on the candy aisle? Isn't that easier? Let alone in your mouth. Though they taste like your usual sugary treats, the concept of crime scene candies is what makes them downright disgusting. The only saving grace of this sweet is that it'll make for a great oh prank prop. Great prank prop. Last time I checked, I can produce all three of those things from my body without needing to buy disgusting candy. So how about if we need a prank prop? I'll just give you the real deal. Deal? Ooh, that was a bad deal. Just because someone offers you something doesn't mean you should take it. Ugh. Molly Popeyes. Oh. Who would have thought that eyeball-shaped candies would ever be a thing? I would have thought that. Huh? Huh? Okay, fine, not funny. These lollipops look exactly like human eyeballs and come with bubblegum centers as pupils. Pop one in to get the Halloween spirit going. Fair warning, though, don't stare at the pupils for too long. 
it might make your stomach turn. And don't think of gory zombie movies while eating these sugary treats. These are incredibly realistic looking. Okay, not gonna lie, I thought it was gross at first, but once they started talking about that bubblegum center, now I might be interested. They do say you gotta work hard for the things you want in life. So if that means I gotta eat a couple of eyeballs on the way, then so be it. Maybe if I eat two of them, I'll get 2220 vision. These things will zoom better than an iPhone. Pickle candy canes. I almost bought them for an ASMR on my other channel, but then some reason the Amazon order got canceled. Oh, uh, now I want them even more. Candy canes are a Christmas staple. To make these more Halloween appropriate, the makers came up with a green and white one. Don't expect sweet minty goodness when you bite into these. These green candy canes are actually in pickle flavor. They taste Ugh. exactly like a dill pickle and might make an excellent addition to your burger. Yeah, if you want to feel like you're chewing on glass. Salty glass. And salt in a wound just makes everything worse. Oh man, this just sounded like a nightmare. Okay, maybe I don't want them from Amazon anymore. No, thank you. Funky fizz. We've all tried candies that are in powder form. So what makes funky fizz any different? Other than the name, these innocent looking powders are hiding a nasty surprise. Uh, I'm sorry. Did that say bacon and wasabi flavor fizz? What the heck is that? No, it's not poison or anything venomy but the flavors come pretty close to that. <laughs> Funky Fizz comes in flavors like cola and banana. Sounds normal, right? Dude, the boy just screamed his head off after eating the candy. Come pretty close to that. I don't know what ears you have, but that don't sound normal to me. Hairball Gumball, the pet cat. You would have been subjected to the Ew. grossness that comes with hairballs. So we don't know how anyone in their right mind would think of hairballs as candies. I'm looking at you, family. Y'all better not eat these Halloween candies. Or I might have to have a family talk with you. And not a good one. Mm. These bubble gums come in a tin, which has the image of a cat coughing up a furball. Thankfully, the gums themselves taste normal. But how can anyone get past the disgusting <laughs> reference? <laughs> Okay, I don't think the cat on that package is coughing up a furball. I think he's coughing up your furball flavored gumballs. Even he can't fake that he likes it. He probably got paid too to take these photos. And even after the money, he can't make it look good. That's worse than the bubblegum meatballs. Except one tastes like a disgusting meatball. And the other one tastes like chewing on your dad's disgusting beard. Probably still covered in meatballs. Butter sucker. There is nothing Ooh. better than a dollop of soft butter on steaming hot pancakes. That's wrong. Uh, Y'all clearly never had hot Cheetos. Way better combination. Maybe the makers of these lollipops like butter too. However, they took their love too far. A slab of butter on a stick. Well, not literal butter. The butter flavored lollipop looks exactly like a pat of butter and tastes like it too. This is a flavor we never thought of seeing in candy form. What's the worst one on the list? No. Was it completely unnecessary and kind of stupid? Oh yeah, family, yes. Moving on. Porky pooper. <laughs> Making candies that taste like pork Ew. is an absolute no. So we really don't know why anyone would be <gasps> interested in poop-like <gasps> sweets that come oh. out of the pig's bottom. Okay, okay, too much, too much. Let's just pretend like we didn't see that. Porky Pooper is one of the <laughs> grossest candies out there. Ew. The four-inch plastic pig poops out brown jelly beans after you swing his head to the side and fill his tummy with candies. But tell me this, do those jelly beans taste like chocolate or chocolate, if you know what I mean? Ugh. Hose nose. Ew. Here's a candy shaped like a giant nose. Ooh. Hmm, we don't know how to feel about that. Doesn't sound as disgusting as the other sweets on our list, right? Not really. Liquid boogers don't sound disgusting to you? All right then. Hose nose is a plastic nose that you strap onto your face. Then how do you eat it? The nose slowly oozes out the liquid candy that you can lick off with your tongue. The snot-inspired candy was discontinued. And I wonder why. Earwax candy. Oh. Earwax candy is exactly what it sounds like. Thankfully, it's not made of real earwax, but it looks grossly similar. It is a plastic container shaped like a human ear and comes filled with earwax. The wax is a fruit-flavored gel that you have to scoop out with a cotton swab-like stick. Hold on, family. Did they just say fruit-flavored? I gotta try this. <laughs> oh, definitely not fruit. 
pork chocks. Pork chocks. Grand pork chocks. Whoa. These are deep fried pork skin oh. dipped in chocolate. It's combining Ooh. delicious pork rinds with sweet chocolate. This culinary crime comes in different flavors. I want to say it sounds disgusting, but after looking at those photos, I'd try it. You can add chocolate to anything and make it tastier. Even your homework. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Barf bags. Ooh. Another day and another crime in the candy world. Why are candy makers terrorizing us with this wacky concept? We can now chew on vomit like gummies. Called barf bags, each packet is filled with a mix of gummy and liquid candy and orange flavor that is made to look like someone emptied their guts inside. Wait, that don't look like no guts. That looks like chocolate covered marshmallows and some tasty ones indeed. <laughs> the gooey liquid doesn't help make it mm. any more appealing. Nah, dude, that looks good. I want some. Heck, at this point, I don't even care if there's real barf in there. If it tastes like candy, I'll eat it. And then probably barf it up afterwards. Yeah. Box of boogers. Ew. Disturbing is an understatement for this candy. Mm -hmm. Called box of boogers, it is eerily similar to the real boogers. The package even advertises that they look and feel real. These sweet and salty candies come in three flavors, but whoever named them really knew the assignment. Did they just say sweet and salty? Oh, y'all, that ain't right. Snottermelon, sour green boogie, and lemon loogie oh. are not the flavors you expect when you walk down the candy aisle, and the icy green color only makes things worse. Icy green? Family, if I wanted to eat boogers, I would have just got them myself. You want to see? All right. Oreo cakes. Oh, I used to love those. Those things were so good. They're like the perfect cake mixed with an Oreo and that fluffy goodness and... Mm. If you grew up in the early 2000s, you probably remember Oreo Cakesters. These closely resembled America's favorite cookie, except these were soft, bite-sized cakes. They came in a variety of classic flavors, double <laughs> stuffed, chocolate, golden Oreos, and even peanut butter. Peanut butter? I never got those! Bro! These cakes were discontinued in 2012. In Japan, there's an Oreo soft cookie, which is similar to our beloved cakesters, but then again, only available in East Asia. There's still a lot of questions surrounding why these were taken off of shelves, and though fans have reached out to Nabisco, they haven't been able to get a solid response. Look at me! <laughs> the only thing we know for sure is that these have been taken off the shelves, possibly for good. However, if you're craving an Oreo cakester or just want to try them out, the good news is that there are recipes online that tell you exactly how to make them. People loved these so much that they just had to DIY them in their home kitchens. Wait! I can make them myself? Oh my gosh, family. Comment down below if you want me to make these Oreo Cakesters for one of my next videos. I promise you, they are chef's kiss delicious. But for now, RIP to those Oreo Cakesters, you will be missed. Nestle Bug Pops. I'm sorry, what pops? Bug pops? Ugh. Here's a bunch of things that all 90 kids loved all combined into one. Popsicles, fun-shaped gummies, mm -hmm. and the Lion King. Yeah. Nestle's bug pops were popsicles that had tiny little bug-shaped gummies inside of them. Mm. And those Lion King rascals, Timon and Pumbaa, featured on the packaging. While Nestle's cool creations line had many a Disney-themed snack item, this one was probably the most fun. They even came with Lion King themed cards inside. This frozen treat was unfortunately discontinued, but there are many fond memories from fans online begging for Nestle to give these icy pops one more chance. Nestle has made no comment on this outcry from fans, so it looks like Timon and Pumba are just going to have to stay a distant memory of the past. You're telling me that there was a Lion King themed lollipop? With with fake gummy bugs in it? And your girl didn't try it? Dang. What was I doing? I don't know if any of y'all have tried that, but it looks delicious.
delicious. Why would they ban those lollipops? Sure, it's technically made with bugs and it might be kind of gross. Might taste a little bit like dirt, but it's candy we're talking about here. So you're probably gonna have a sore stomach either way. You might as well go all the way in. Can't be a quitter when we talking about sugar. You know what I mean? Kellogg's Yogos. Ooh. I don't know if they still make Yogos, but they used to be like these freezy looking things of yogurt and you just slurp them up instead of eating your yogurt like a lame person does with a spoon. It was way cooler, okay? Yogos were small, circular, multicolored mm. fruit snacks with a yogurt shell and they quickly garnered a good reputation. Wait, I thought they were yogurt tubes. I guess they're yogurt dots? Eh. Same thing. They were a popular snack when introduced in 2005, but were unfortunately discontinued only five years later. Coming in a wide variety of brightly colored packages, these went through several Pokemon-like evolutions <laughs> before they were retired for good. The original Yogos evolved into Yogos Bits and then into Yogos Sour Bits before disappearing off the face of the planet. They were supposedly discontinued for health reasons. However, there is speculation that the real reason these were discontinued by Kellogg's is simply because these yogurt balls were too expensive to make. Too expensive to make? Bro, they're literally little yogurt dots smaller than the size of a peanut. And there's only five of them in each packet. How expensive could that really be? I ain't no high class chef cooking yogurt maker or anything, but I don't think it would be that much. And that the yogurt in the product had a higher risk of spoilage and therefore a higher risk of lost profit. Mm. In any case, it's evident that these snacks weren't discontinued because they were unpopular. We hope that one day, Kellogg's will hear the cries and bring back Yogos for good. I see, I see. So since they're yogurt, they expire quicker and if they expire faster, you gotta throw them out. If you throw them out, then that's last mula cha cha. That ain't in the company's pocket. I guess that's why they're banned, but somebody needs to bring them back, okay? Okay, because yo, I would go pretty far for these yogos. Even if they're expired, I don't even care. Toss those over here and let me pop those dipping dot looking things right in my mouth because they delicious. Cheetos Cheesy Checkers. Ooh. Conclusion, they take a beating, you keep on. Eating. I love Cheetos. Cheetos. Cheesy Checkers are only one of many beloved Cheetos products to go out of style. Wrapped up in an orange and purple bag, launched in 1995, but gone by 1998, nostalgia for these waffle-shaped Cheetos can be found on Reddit and bodybuilding forums alike. These things look like those crinkle-cut looking fries that you can get at some restaurants. Except instead of getting your fingers covered in salt from those french fries, these ones you can get your fingers covered in Cheeto dust. And I'd prefer the Cheeto dust. <laughs> In an ad released in the 1990s, Chester Cheetah, dressed in his typical sunglasses plus a cowboy hat, is sitting on a shelf, about to munch on one of these cheesy checkers, when a robot holding a captive doll approaches. Oh. <laughs> a cheesy checker flies into the air in slow motion, disabling the robot. Chester Cheetah gets the girl, and also the snack. Well, we do love us a good Western-themed commercial, so if Cheetos ever decides to put these back on the shelves, we know that we'll be grabbing some to try. Are we surprised that Chester Cheeto ended up with the girl? Well, actually, kinda. Cause usually cheesy pickup lines don't work. At least not on me. But if we're talking about Cheetos, I guess those rules hop out the window. Wonka peel a pop. That's right, family. You just saw a banana popsicle that you can peel off. Now let me explain. Timed with the 50th anniversary of Roald Dahl's childhood classic, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, my favorite movie ever. What happens in a chocolate factory stays in a chocolate factory. And sometimes you never come back. Nestle US released their second ice cream under the Wonka brand. The Wonka Peel-A-Pop frozen desserts were designed to designed to use as a microphone and sing your heart out in karaoke night? Cause that's what it seems like. Designed to look like a banana but contain none of the fruit's health benefits. Very much potassium. Ah, that banana's like expired. So, oh, man, oh. Man, oh.
They came in two flavors, vanilla banana and vanilla grape. Grape say what now? Vanilla and grape in the same sentence? Ugh, I don't think so. And the most fun part of it was that you could actually peel it. And unlike a real banana, you could even eat the peel. The peel-a-pop is said to be a fantabulous treat. There's even instructions on how to eat it on the back. Bite, peel, enjoy. Oh, I'm sorry, but I have never been a person to just bite into something frozen. Oh, that's like asking someone to chew on ice. I don't care who you are. If you chew on ice, you're crazy. I'm sorry, someone had to say it. At 70 calories per pop, these actually weren't even that unhealthy. <laughs> and the brand also encourages children to go out and play after eating them. This was a go-to snack for after-school treats and lunch boxes. While Nestle is aware of these complaints, unfortunately, they've given no indication that they're going to be bringing them back anytime soon. Aww, I wanna try a peel of pop. I peel my pop every day. One day vanilla, one day grape, one day both. Depends the day of the week. Why you gotta ban that, Willy Wonka? By banning that candy, you're also banning my hopes and dreams. And that's just cruel. A wedding ring. A, a wedding ring? Went through his treats, only to find a wedding ring in between the Twix and Tootsie Rolls. A woman unexpectedly put her wedding ring in the candy jar after helping her daughter with pumpkin carving. Idiot! I mean, um, honest mistake? Then left her ring into a bag later that night, forgetting she put it in the jar. <gasps> okay, so this isn't all that dangerous, but maybe it could have choked a kid. What are you talking about dangerous? How about expensive? Try explaining that one to your husband. Cause girl, he never gonna buy you another ring again. Your only hope now is going to the gas station and buying yourself a bag of Fritos hoops. Staples. Staples? Two children in Fort Worth, Texas found staples in Reese's peanut butter cups from trick-or-treating. This is staples instead of peanut butter? You're only missing the best part of the candy bar. How'd you mix those ones up? The peanut butter cups containing staples came in packages that were sealed. The child told the local media that he first noticed something was wrong when he saw a hole in the candy. The parents still don't know where their children got the dangerous candy. Um, it sounds like from Mr. Hershey's man himself. Isn't the point of selling something to get a customer to keep coming back? Back and back. So, Mr. Hershey, sir, if I can call you that, why are you trying to oof your customers? Marbles. Ooh, marbles. Often people are reckless and unintentionally dropping things into Halloween candy bags, but most of the time, people are crazy putting marbles in candy bags. The only crazy thing I see about that picture is the apple inside of the candy bowl. You trying to give me a fruit? A fruit on National Candy Day, aka Halloween, aka the best day of the year? Cause my mama lets me eat three chocolate bars instead of just one? I'm not trying to waste that on fruit. Jeez, if I wanted to be healthy, I would have became a doctor. I'm good. One parent found a marble inside the entire bag of Halloween candy. He said that his daughter is three and probably would have choked on it had he not checked the bag. Would she have choked or would she have tried to recreate the fifth game in Squid Games? There ain't no rules in the game of marbles. I guess that means eating them too? I'll remember that next time I want to see my cute dentist. I'll just take a couple bites of those and then boom! Oh no! I guess my teeth are broken! Bits of glasses. Another report says that in Buffalo, New York, a woman found a shard of glass Ooh. that had been carefully placed inside a Tootsie Roll. Oh which my gosh! Which isn't the easiest thing to do. Glass. They've been found inside Snickers and Twix as well. I like the Snickers and Twix! Those are my favorite! Couldn't you put it in the candy corn or Tootsie Rolls? Nobody likes those! Oh wait, family, you like candy corn? Are you serious? Oh, I mean, I'm not judging you or anything, but maybe I'm judging you a bit. Cause the only thing nastier than candy corn is real corn because it doesn't have any sugar and it gets stuck all in your teeth. So when you smile, people are like, uh, were you just munching on SpongeBob's head? The woman was celebrating Halloween with her family, but fortunately managed to see the glass inside the candy before she swallowed it. A lucky escape. So it wasn't the Tootsie Roll. Girl, I'm gonna be honest. If you were actually eating a Tootsie Roll for fun and not from a dare, then I think unfortunately you might have had it coming. Well, I mean, no one deserves to eat glass. Yeah, okay, never mind. I take that back. But you do need to be taught a lesson on what's good candy and what's bad candy. Because clearly you're getting some kind of karma. That's bad juju. 
milk bud bullets. <gasps> it sucks the granny. Is that what I think it is? Mud stuck to your molars, but finding Are they going to say what I think? Oh, no, 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 no. A statement from JFOR said that a woman in Ohio noticed bullets inside four different boxes of milk duds. The individual box carried three bullets designed for a 22 handgun. Weirdly, the boxes came from a preschool, but the purpose is unknown. <gasps> Could it be a mistake or is this seriously a disgusting way to scare kids? We'll never know. <laughs> Could this be a mistake finding these bullets inside of a chocolate bar inside of a preschool? Hmm, I wonder if it's a mistake. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Teacher, if I should even be calling you a teacher anymore, because you sound a little stupid. Family, let's play a little game of what doesn't belong in a school. Markers? Good job. Glasses? Hey, you smart family? And lastly, bullets. Wait, you're saying those don't belong? No! Are you serious? Okay, family, if you say so, fine. Because clearly I had no idea. And the people in this video didn't either. Ugh. Razor blades. <gasps> like nails, razors can be slipped into snack-sized candy bars pretty easily. There was a report from Mineola, Florida, about a 15-year-old boy who found a razor blade in his candy. 15-year-old boy? They don't need no razor blades? They can't even grow hair yet. What, are you gonna get him to shave his eyebrow? I mean, it could be stylish. No, family, no. They don't need it. The kid noticed the candy on the ground, so he went ahead and picked up the candy. <laughs> he found a very dangerous object on the ground, so what did he do? Picked it up, obviously. Good job, Jimmy. Mommy taught you well. The child's mom began separating all the candy. She saw a Three Musketeers candy bar that seemed to have something wedged inside. What she found was a razor blade that had been hidden under the chocolate. I mean, at least they had the decency to hide the razor blade under the chocolate instead of on top. On top of the chocolate bar would have been too obvious. Duh. Needles. This one is similar to the nails, except uh, needles are smaller, thus yeah. a little harder to find. One time a parent was checking on their kid's candy, only to find out that inside the Twix bar was a little piece of needle sticking Ooh. out. These are the most dangerous because they can be hidden inside a piece of candy and leave little trace to tampering on the wrapper. Yeah, it might not obviously be in the chocolate bar because the wrapper's all good, but believe me, as soon as you grab that thing and take a big juicy bite, <laughs> where it is gonna be obvious is in your mouth. Because that needle might be small, but if you bite on it, it'll leave a big hole here. You probably will never be able to eat again or taste anything or ever get to experience it's your mom's double chocolate fudge brownies ever again. Oh no, Halloween is scary. Be safe out there, family. If we've learned anything from this video, it's always check your Halloween candy before eating it. And two, yeah, maybe just don't eat your Halloween candy. Cause you might lose your tongue. Ugh. Our first candy we got for you is called Ear Wax Candy. And unfortunately the candy is exactly what it sounds like. The candy that comes in packaging that looks exactly like someone's ear. And then you open it up and bam! Earwax exactly where the ear hole should be. Oh, but the fun doesn't stop there. Not only do you get to eat your own earwax, the candy also comes with your own personal digging tool slash Q-tip that you can use to dig out deer wax to safely plop it in your mouth. Now I'm told that this candy actually tastes pretty fruity. And I can't say that I've ever actually picked my own ear and tried the taste. So I don't know how realistic that taste is. But if any of y'all wanna try it and get back to me in the comments, let me know. Number nine is called Lick Your Wounds Candy Scab. Ugh, I could just tell what this one's gonna be. You were gonna cut on your arm, plopped a band-aid on that sucker and looked at it and said, dang, I really wanna eat that. Yeah, I didn't think you thought that either. But apparently people at the candy shop thought it was a great idea. Here we got a band-aid container that you can literally put on your arm just like you would a regular band-aid but it doesn't stop there the actual bandage part of the band-aid actually has a secret container that you could open up and find a little surprise in there and what's that surprise you might ask a candy scab you heard me right there's literally a little piece of candy stuck in that band-aid that's supposed to act like someone's scab wound like what is going on that is literally disgusting i don't know what kind of sick twisted individual decided that getting a cut on yourself is appetizing but apparently some people are into it they even 
went so far to put fake blood on the scab. Ugh, look how disgusting that looks to make it look as realistic as possible. The box of candy even features refills for when you finish your first scab, you can keep putting more scabs in the same band-aid and shut the band-aid and save it for later. I don't know the logic behind this, but apparently the people they're trying to sell their candy to is not only sick, twisted individuals who want to eat themselves, but also sick, twisted individuals who want to eat themselves on the go. Next up, we got Chaka Ka. Chaka Kaka? Guys, I'm just gonna flat out say it's exactly what you're thinking. It's exactly the disgustingest thing you could think of that has the word Chaka Kaka. Yeah. <sighs> Here we got a Rugrats looking baby with a diaper on the inside and the chocka ka ka. So this one's not candy, I guess. It's chocolate. But you can put the pieces together of what that chocolate is trying to mimic. And it ain't no strawberries and bananas, that's for sure. This candy even goes as far as in the instructions, it tells you to heat up the chocka caca in the diaper in the microwave for 20 seconds for maximum, dare I say, oomph. Blech. Now, I don't know how this chocolate smells, but I'm gonna tell you right now that I don't wanna know. For scrumptious, melt in your mouth, bite side tur turtles, crack on a hard surface. Prefer yummy, gooey caca? I don't even know if I could say this on YouTube, guys. Oh, really? Then unseal the bag and microwave for 10 seconds. Either way, enjoy, because this is as sweet as it will ever get? They're putting an exclamation mark, but I'm putting a question, question, question mark? Because this stuff is messed up. Okay, so this next one you guys have probably already seen before. I've actually featured the candy in some of my ASMR videos on my other channel, guys. Go check that channel out, and if you're not already subscribed to it, subscribe. Link's gonna be in the description for that one. But you know the days that just plain candy just doesn't do it for you? You know you need a little extra kicker, if you know what I'm saying. Behold, the hot licks insect candy because your old lollipops were just too delicious to not ruin it with a fried scorpion in the middle. Guys, I'm not even kidding about this. This is legit real fried scorpions inside of a lollipop. Now, I don't know how or where they're getting these insects from, but what I do know is where they're ending up, and that's in kids' mouths. Now, if they stay in those mouths or if they puke them up a bit, I don't know. I'm not the judge for that, but apparently people buy them. I mean, heck, I even bought them, but did I eat them? I don't know. That's a different story. You're gonna have to check out my other channel to figure that out, but it gets even better. They don't just have scorpions. Peans, okay? They got ants. They got grasshoppers. They got worms. And they got other bigger worms that I don't know the name of. Yeah, they got a whole variety of different insects and every color of the rainbow of candy you could think of. Now, I don't know if these insects were already dead before they got stuck inside this melted candy-like coffin of theirs, but I definitely don't think that they thought at their funeral people would be eating them along with their coffin in their mouths just for fun. Freaking freaks. Jane Jane Tasty Tuna Tidbits. Now that's a handful in your mouth, but it's also a fishy one. Tasty tuna tidbits that are pretty much exactly what you're thinking. They're pieces of candy that the packaging makes them look like they're gonna be some tasty little candy that you find at your grandma's house in that little bowl with the cover on top. And then, mm, Mmm. These things are made from straight tuna. And not even just a little bit of tuna, like a lot of tuna, guys. Like pure tuna that was cured and then made into a little candy ball. And then after that, repackaged up to look like a tasty candy. Like what? I don't know who they're trying to catfish or tuna fish, but they ain't fooling anybody. Like bro, how hard is it to make a tasty candy? I don't know if making it with tuna is like a cheaper way to cut costs or something, but I wouldn't eat that, that's for sure, but maybe that's just me. Next up, we got the classic bean boozled jelly bean. Now, I have eaten many of these in my life, mostly for dares, but nonetheless, I've tried them. It comes in really cool packaging with all different colors, and essentially, they're just jelly beans that have all these different kinds of 
flavors, but the flavors are not regular jelly bean flavors. They're disgusting kind of flavors. And not just kind of disgusting, very disgusting flavors. Like I'm talking about snot. I'm talking about boogers. I'm talking about eggs. Everything that you would not want to find in a jelly bean, you're going to find in Bean Boozled. Here we got some more flavors. We got toothpaste. Sen Ugh. Does say centipede? Oh my god. Centipede. Skunk spray, canned dog food, baby wipes, rotten eggs, pencil shavings. Are you saying that there's lead in these candies? Oh my God, guys. More candies with lead in them. If you watch my other banned candies that video, you'll know that I exposed many different candy companies for putting lead in their candy. But if you want to hear about that, go check out the video. We also got moldy cheese, barf, and boogers. Mmm, appetizing. So you don't just eat the jelly beans like that. You actually use the spinner wheel thing that comes in the box to act as a game to decide who and what kind of jelly bean you eat. I remember way too many sleepovers with this bean boozled game. And let me tell you, it never ended well. The sleepover's all fun and games, you're having a good time, and then bam! You have to eat a barf-flavored bean boozled jelly bean. And not only do you eat the barf jelly bean, you end up actually barfing for real after you eat it. Yeah, it's that gross! Okay, guys, the next one, I don't even know what to expect. I don't want to look at it, but it's called Sour Candy Liquid Urine. Samples. So you know when you go to the doctor and you maybe have to take a couple tests and sometimes they ask you to, you know, go to the bathroom and put the stuff from the bathroom in that little cuppy thing that you fill with your own liquid? Yeah, that's exactly what this candy's packaging looks like. And by the looks of it, it looks like there's some kind of liquid inside. Oh my god, I don't even want to look at that one on the bottom because it's open and you can see the candy. Do, can I even call this candy at this point? The candy oozing out of the bottle? Apparently this one has a sweet taste too. But again, I can't verify how realistic that is or not because you know why. But what I do know is if you're gonna be drinking some of this stuff for fun, you might have a couple other things that you should be worrying about instead of just drinking this candy. Weirdo? Number three, chili legs pepper shaped lollipop. Okay, this one doesn't sound too weird at first. I mean, I like spicy and I like lollipops. What could really go wrong? Okay, this one doesn't seem too bad. It literally just looks like a pepper on a stick that they turned into a lollipop. Maybe it's just gross because people think it's really spicy and they can't handle the flame. Well, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen, am I right? Okay, Alexia, calm down. Okay, we got three flavors. We got red chili, we got jalapeno, and we got habanero. Three different peppers, all very spicy. And you can see them right there. Doesn't look that intimidating. Maybe you get someone this as a gift, maybe like a prank gift. You say, oh, look, I got you a green apple lollipop. And they'll say, okay, thanks for the lollipop. But wait, why is it shaped like a devil's horn? And you say, mm, I don't know. They try the lollipop. They end up dying from spice. And then you realize that it wasn't the lollipop that has the devil's horns. It's you because you're a freaking demon doing this to your friend. Okay, so this clear chili lollipop in the middle is supposed to be the spiciest out of all of them. It's clear because it's supposed to be white like a ghost because it's supposed to be a ghost pepper thing in there. And if you guys don't know about ghost peppers, that stuff is spicy. And not just the kind of spicy that you get in a spicy chicken sandwich. No, this stuff is legit. The kind of spicy that you gotta sign a waiver to say that you agree that if anything bad happens to you after you eat this, that they can't get in trouble for it. But all in all, I think this one's actually kind of cool. I like the idea. Let's check the next candy. Number two, mini blood bags. Okay, guys, I can't even hate on this candy because, again, I bought mini blood bags for my ASMR channel for a Halloween-themed video that I did. But anyways, this is what it looks like. It even has a Frankenstein thing on the packaging because I guess Halloween vibes. But it's supposed to mimic, you know, when you go to the hospital and you're put on IV and there's that, like, bag of liquid that drips into you. It's supposed to be like that, but full of blood. It says bag old blood. Volunteer donor Mr. Sugar Tooth expires when eaten. <laughs> blood type S positive? Uh, guys, I'm pretty sure that's not a real kind of blood type. What's the S stand for? Stolen 
blood? Scary? <gasps> Satan? Oh gosh, guys, I feel like this blood is haunted. Oh no, no, no. I don't want to look at it anymore. It's creeping me out. Okay, here we got another package of it. This one looks even creepier. And for some reason, the blood type changed to B positive. Maybe B stands for blood or bears or broken bodies after you eat it. I don't know, guys. Okay, next candy. Okay, this last candy is probably the weirdest candy out of all the candies that I just showed you. It's called Hose nose candy now i'm not gonna spoil it for you but i'm just gonna say a hose what does it do it drips and what does your nose also do it drips now you might be looking at it and say alexia what the heck is this what are you showing me this is dumb and i'm here to say i agree with you it's very dumb what you gotta do is you gotta take this nose you literally have straps to put it on your head it attaches to your face and then what does it do the nose drips out candy that goes in your mouth so you literally be walking around with this weird thing on your nose that's dripping into your mouth like you're eating your own snot yes i said that you're eating your own snot Ugh. so thankfully this packaging looks like it's a halloween theme so maybe it only comes out at halloween you know for the real crepes but the thing that concerns me the most is that it says candy slime filled now i ain't no expert but last time i checked i thought slime wasn't edible so i don't know if you're gonna be eating slime that you gotta spit out after or this is another one of those candy tricks that you're gonna be accidentally eating lead but either way i'm sketched out oh my gosh okay guys so this is the candy in action and might i say i'm very Disturb. This is somebody else trying to use it, but it looks like he's actually missing his mouth. I don't know. Maybe his nose is too big that it sticks out so much that his tongue isn't long enough to catch the candy. But to be honest, maybe it's better for him that he doesn't have to eat any of that stuff. Because I definitely don't trust it. Okay, first up, we got the Sour Flush, the iconic toilet bowl of a candy. Okay, guys, honestly, I've actually bought this before and I've eaten it on my other channel, Alexia Morano, in an ASMR. Go check that out if you want to see it. But this candy, ugh, it stays true to its name. Not only does it have the most sour powder in the inside of the toilet bowl, but it's also just so disgusting knowing that you're dipping your plunger into a toilet bowl and then licking it. I mean, can't say I've ever found anything looking like that in my toilet bowl. But hey, I don't know, maybe you guys have. Maybe y'all are a bunch of aliens disposing of some radioactive liquids that were never meant to be eaten. And to be honest, I don't think this sour flesh was either. Ugh. Okay, next up we have the lobster candy. And funny enough, guys, funny enough, I have actually also eaten these in my ASMR on my other channel. These are essentially hard candies that you pop in your mouth and they're supposed to taste like lobster. Spoiler alert, they're salty, they're not sweet, and they're definitely disgusting. I mean, I thought the whole point of candies were that you pop them in your mouth after you ate some food at a restaurant so your breath don't smell stanky. But could you imagine eating one of these and then trying to get close to your date? Maybe even try and get a little smoochy smooch. You close your eyes, you go in for the kiss, and then bam, all you feel is a hand slapping your head away and some boy telling you that you smell like fish. I mean, fish are cute and all, but I'm not trying to have any eau de lobster perfume anytime soon. That's stanky. All I can say for this one is pickle candy canes. I actually saw these on Amazon at one point and I was very tempted to buy some, but I didn't. And now I'm pretty sure that these things don't even exist anymore. I can so see someone just filing a lawsuit. He gave his grandpa pickle candy cane. Poor grandpa thought it was mint flavor, but uh-uh, grandpa. You went for a sour surprise. Grandkids probably thought that they were pulling some funny prank on their grandpa. But then the only sour look they got from grandpa was on his face after he was so angry for eating that disgusting thing. I guess a pickle a day keeps the grandpa away, even on Christmas. We got some salsa getty here and I have no idea what this thing is. It don't sound good and I'm assuming it don't look good either. Yep, does not look appealing to me. It's like some candy that looks like spaghetti 
with some spices and hot sauce on there. I mean, can we just take a look at this for a second? How on earth are we supposed to eat that thing? You telling me I'm gonna pick that up with my bare hands, put it on my mouth, only for my hand to be sticky with some disgusting goop after? Maybe if it was a whole meal or something, but that candy looks the size of my pinky finger. I ain't dirtying my hands for a one bite brownie situation. At least brownies taste good. This looks like some spaghetti you get at your friend's house and you know they didn't cook it well, but you have to eat it to be polite. Mmm, yum. Mmm, tastes so good. Mmm, I promise I love it. Ugh. And the taste never left your mouth since. Even your taste buds got scarred. Hersey Pig Angry Birds Pez Candies? Last time I checked, Pez Candies are supposed to be tasty. I used to take my Pez container everywhere. Star Wars, Spider-Man, SpongeBob ones. I had them all. But these ones look like some cute little pigs. I mean, I get it since some pig packaging that's green and supposed to gross you out. But excuse me, sir. It's not about what's on the outside. It's about what's on the inside. And that's the yummy candy. I don't care if it looks like a pig, a banana, or even some dirt at the bottom of my shoe. If that thing tastes good, it tastes good. I'll eat just about anything. I'll even eat you. Watch out. Okay, guys, you know how I just said I'd eat anything? Well, I take that back because behold, the chocolate covered crickets. Yes, these are real bugs covered in dark chocolate and they're in little ball pieces and there's probably other things in there that's trying to disguise the craziness about eating crickets. Toasted crickets, amaranth seeds, semi-sweet chocolate, and sea salt. Now, I ain't no chef, but who's just sitting there chilling, going about their day and was like, hmm, you know what's a great idea? Putting chocolate over top of live crickets and then eating them. What kind of bad, horrible day do you have to be having to have those sick, twisted thoughts in your head? You think it was just some serial killer who was too scared to do the real thing with real people? So he decided to do it with crickets instead? Ugh. It's 2021 family and we have equality for everybody, even crickets. We stand crickets on this channel now. I cheese and onion chocolate bars. I mean, guys, chocolate is good. Don't get me wrong, but I do not think that it goes with everything. Cheese, good. Onions, good. Chocolate, good. But all three mixed together, mm, not good, dude, not good. At least I think because I've never had the chocolate bar before. So if any of y'all have had anything similar to this, let me know in the comments and I will heart your comment and call you a freak at the same time. Musk flavored candy sticks. Okay, before today, I thought musk was this thing that you call a guy. I thought if they smell a certain type of way, you'd be like, oh, you smell musky. It's one of those manly things, you know, maybe they were working in the yard, cutting down some trees and then they walk in and you're like, Dang, babe, you smell musky. I like it. But now this candy has me questioning my whole thought process. I don't really know what musk is supposed to smell like. Maybe it's something bad, but apparently there's something like 20 million of these candies sold every single year. So it seems like people like it. I mean, I would rather have a candy that tastes like cherries or strawberries, but if y'all wanna have your candy smelling like yucky, stinky boy, then you go ahead. Wasabi flavored Kit Kats. Do I even need to say more? This is only available in Japan and makes me wanna hop on an airplane right now and go there. I've never actually been to Japan family. I've only been to their airport and even the airport was really cool. So ever since then, I really, really wanna go back to Japan and these wasabi flavor Kit Kats is just another reason to go. I mean, I love wasabi on my sushi, but in my Kit Kat bar, I don't know. That's a pretty crazy idea, Kit Kat. You think the people working over there were just thinking of a new flavor and they just couldn't think of a new idea? They're like, screw it. We like wasabi, just put it in the chocolate bar. Kit Kat, I think y'all are the ones that need to take a break. Cause that idea is crazy. I'd still try it though. Probably like it too. Hmm. And the last candy, which is the most crazy out of all of them, is chocolate rolled fried worms. These are real worms that are rolled in chocolate. I think it's like an apple that's covered in chocolate and then they roll it into a ball. And look, there's a kid eating it in some candy and I guess they're 
getting their protein in. They make it with all these different kinds of things, snacks, chocolate, vegetables. They going crazy for these things. I know we've all been trying to eat healthier lately, you know, staying at home on that quarantine diet, but do we really gotta eat worms? We're talking about worms, people. The animal that literally lives in the dirt. And they're so small and thin. Can you imagine just eating one? And then it gets stuck between your teeth like some dental floss? Not only can you eat it, it cleans your teeth too. How you think your dentist would feel about that one? But anyways, family, that is all of the weird and disgusting candies that I have for you today. If you liked today's video, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you want to join the family, which I hope you do, hit that subscribe button and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any of my videos that I post. I love you all so much. And I'll see you all in the next video.